Woodward Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. But, Mr. Chappelle, what if I told you that we had DNA evidence linking Mr. Simpson to the scene of the crime? Then I'd have to ask you where you found it. In his bedroom, at the crime scene, and in his car. In the car? Right in his car. Damn. In, in the bedroom, too? In the bedroom. Damn. I, damn. Damn. <laughs> Oh man, what up, yo, people? <laughs> Welcome to Wake Up Woodward. What a way to start the day, eh? Thank you guys for choosing to kick off your day with Wake Up Woodward. Hey, hey man. Chat <laughs> family, I as plead always. The, I plead the fifth. Yeah. One, two, three. F O F. Fifth. Can you say fifth? Fifth. <laughs> Wait, oh, so you're saying that was the R. Kelly one? Nah, yeah, I think that was a different oh. one. But great skit either what way. What a time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, hey, so we get a little bit of a. Uh, Saturday Night Vibes with JB Smooth to start off the show tonight. Mm, just a little bit. Mm, little you guys taste. remember, he was involved in one of the biggest trades in American history. Dave Chappelle? Yeah, it was uh, uh, Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice. That's oh, right. yeah. Or OJ Simpson. Yeah. That's right. Hey, uh, hey how about the Asians? No swindling, ain't no swindling me, Rondell. <laughs> no, how, Real mature Rondell. How about the Asians picking the Wu-Tang Clan, man? That was <laughs> like that's the that's best one. <laughs> It was so crazy. They panned to them and they were all doing that. Too. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that wasn't that long ago? Yeah. 20 like, years. You, it already feels legendary, though. You would get canceled so fast these days. If you Absolutely. Had, they almost got Chappelle. Well, they kind of got Chappelle. Yeah. For a couple of years there. Didn't he leave and go to an island for a yeah. couple? He left. He he dropped. Uh, he left 50 million on the table. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus. It's That's crazy. a big wow. thing to leave on the table. Spend time yeah. in, the, in the motherland, right? In the oh, pride yeah. land, so. Man. Fries. Man, what a start to the show. What a start what to a the start. show. <laughs> oh, in honor. Of, well, I guess maybe I shouldn't connect it to OJ, depending on how you feel. But I brought my Mark Jackson uh, uh, Menendez Brothers card. Mm. Uh, do you guys know that story of the I Menendez? Do you I know do the not. story of the Menendez Brothers? I do not. They, no, you they, they had murdered their parents. Uh, the, okay. these two, yeah, Both these two them. kids <laughs> trying to cash in on the insurance money Damn. just took a shotgun to the back of their parents. Uh, they, they were a wealthy family out in Beverly Hills. Wow. Uh, they weren't arrested initially. This happened in like the fall. Excuse me. This happened in the fall uh, when they were looking for other uh, other perpetrators. They yeah. decided to go on a shopping spree, go on trips, go to a bunch of Knicks games and, and sporting <laughs> events, and sit courtside. Wow. So this this card from 1990. It's a 1990 91 NBA hoops. Mark Jackson card. You can see the Menendez brothers sitting courtside Damn. before they got arrested. So in between murdering their parents and getting arrested uh, and thrown in jail for a long, long time. Sitting courtside in the next game. Crazy. How wow. spooky would that be if you were sitting next to two murderers? I mean, you probably so haven't wrong. just haven't even realized it. You never know what people, what type of time people be on these days. So. Hold on. Why That's are we all looking around at each other now? Right? <laughs> Everybody looking around the room like, huh? They say one in four people is a murderer. Uh oh. One, two. Where's three. Flannel? <laughs> you know, yeah. Where's Where's Flannel? Flannel? <laughs> Shout out to Sam Reynolds, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Chat. <laughs> How about that? Hey, <laughs> good chat. morning. Good You're morning. Right. Smash that like button when you have encouraged somebody else to do the same. We got to because it was just a brutal. Brutal day in Detroit oh, sports. Man, man. Oh. I'm I'm so glad that the Lions didn't lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. I mean, even <laughs> even Jared Goff is winning, man. He How? absolutely won. And listen, the fans all across social media, on Wilbur Sports and other little uh, media sites on their socials, they're all saying, "Look, Jared Goff is right. Jared Goff is right. It is time to prop up and to support." And to talk about the good that these Detroit Lions have represented, especially this last season, you see some narratives where people say, you know what, it's been one year. It's been one year. This isn't just same old Detroit Lions. 
as it related to us discussing it yesterday, I wanted to just understand what was the negativity versus criticism, where is that line drawn? Not that Jared Goff didn't have a point, and to be fair, he did single it down to there was potentially one person. Wojo, was, who's like getting, the goofiest, <laughs> happiest guy in media. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, but look, man, I, I think it is. It's, it's time to really kind of focus on where the Detroit Lions are and where they're headed. I believe that they have a good foundation. And I'm glad, at least on this show, we take the time to really get excited about what this organization is doing. Without a doubt. They've yeah. changed – they changed sports for for Detroit in these last couple of years. Like sort of re uh, reinvigorated us with hope. I know they, the they Pist- changed sports. They have been the sport in Detroit. Yeah, they, they have. Year. But like the, the last decade or two of sports here in Detroit have been tough. Yeah, they've been tough, and we do have some of the most loyal, if not the most loyal, fans in the entire country. So to have your football team like that—that that was the team in the in the sellers of Detroit sports. Like they're the one we've been waiting for the longest. To see them not just have success, but do it in the way that they have, rebuilding the organization, bringing in guys like Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, and then drafting these players, trading for a guy like Jared mm-hmm. Goff. Mm-hmm. Talk about a chip on your shoulder, which I love that he admitted, by the way. Like yeah. he, all you hear out of that locker room and his teammates, like he's just he's very level headed. He doesn't let anything get to him. He, that's what we love about Jared. He, he's not too high and too low. Mm-hmm. I like that he feels some of that. Like. like the, the negative Detroit sports media stuff aside, I love that he feels a chip on his shoulder. Like, he should. Yeah, He bro. made it to the Super Bowl, and he got dumped. Whatever yeah. whatever narrative wants to be spun about him coming to Detroit, or even Brad Holmes wanting him, he still got dumped by the team that he took to the Super Absolutely. Bowl. So, man, I, I'm glad he's got a little bit of, little bit of moxie. You know, it started in that, in that like Packers that. game when, mm-hmm. he, when he fired back at Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yep. It was playful fun, but it's like, you know what? No, Kevin like, Montgomery was like I, I've done enough good in two places now where I'm, I'm not a poor man's anybody. <laughs> Seriously. <Damn. laughs> you know what? You know what I did like about the uh, the interview? Part of me was like, hey, man, you should be somewhere with J-Mo and DPJ right now. But then the other mm-hmm. part of me was like, you know what? That's my quarterback, man. He was sitting back like, <laughs> you know? My you, you, you already know I'm gonna be here for a long time anyway. That, you know? Right, <laughs> like, right. I'm the freaking man. It, it it was so much like my band Eminem energy that I was like, you know what? These chicks don't even. Go on, go, you know what? Jared Goff, go ahead then. Oh my Call God, it's him. Stand on your business, <laughs> man. Hey, talk about it. Like I am all for what Jared Goff showed in that interview. I had an opportunity to kind of go back, rewatch it again. I was like, you know what? That's our guy, yo. And he's confident. He feels accepted. He's saying he loves Detroit, and he's not afraid to call out anybody. Love it's it. It's a consistency. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. It starts from the top. We see it with Brad Holmes Let's calling go. out, you know, the draft grades year of years past, and and <laughs> say, hey, the marshmallow test. Give me, give me some time. I'm gonna show you guys. Mm-hmm. And he's really saying that to the world. I, I, there, of course, there's negativity out there. There's positivity out there. It, like Doc Macaroon, maybe there's it's fifty fifty, or maybe it's. 55 45 but i think for the most part a lot of people in the city are 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 in support of jared goff maybe mm-hmm. there are questions about the contract that's a different story right but i think everyone agrees that's our that's our dude unless unless he's too expensive yeah. i used to have he's issues supported. about the contract but the way that these draft picks have kind of turned into our impact players the way that they were able to go out in this free agency and do some things with some impact players some players that we believe are going to really, really contribute. I honestly, I don't have that concern anymore. Yeah. Brad Holmes, just go cook. If he if he believes Jared Goff should get a contract that none of us believe he should get, I'm not arguing with that. Based on what we've seen from Jared Goff the last three years of just steady improvement from this Lions team, from how they look at him, man, this team follows Jared Goff. He is their leader. He is their leader. And they have experienced winning with this guy. They've experienced getting just shy of a Super Bowl with this guy. And they know that he's been the one and you talk about that chip that you need on your shoulder. Pringle. It, it's there. You don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to try and figure out somewhere how do we get these guys kind of filling the fire. It's already there. It is already there. So if Brad Holmes is in a position where he's saying, you know what, this is our guy. We want to give him this money. Middle fingers to everybody else. Yep. Then honestly, that's just what it is. And, and we will accept that. And I do believe that Jared Goff, regardless of the contract, he's going to put up the numbers. He's going to get this team to where they're trying to go. Speaking of guys and girls to build around, our chat is off the chain. No, they are the always. best. We got Xavier D in the house, Greg Alspaugh, Joseph Austin. Um, even though some of the stuff we say is stupid, 
We love that you're here. Dad with Tourette's, Mike G, Tammy Chin, Jenna Newman, Phil, Corey Berry, Jay Cruzen, pew pew. Everybody in here, John F. and Lord, Eduardo O'Neill. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we just went on a little Jared Goff ran out of nowhere. I think we had to we had to feel some positivity because yeah, Red Wings lost last night. We'll just we'll hit it real quick. Yeah. yeah, Red Wings lost six to five. We'll touch on it more in the next segment. Wasted a Lucas Raymond hat trick. At yeah. least they got one point. I want to ask you guys: is that enough? Here. Is that enough? They hanging on They're for dear life. One no. point. They are one like a loose point tooth. out of a wild card spot right now. So you know what? To get that one point. With three games remaining, I do believe that it matters. You got the Canadians twice yeah. to kind of close out this season. Go out there and get two points in both of those games. They have to. The, prob- the problem is now they don't control their own destiny, though. So you had the yeah. Penguins right there. That's who is in front of you. You had them right there for the taking, and you couldn't get it done. So now it's an uphill battle. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're still in it. They're hanging on for dear life. I, I pray to God that they get in. I really do want to see this Red Wings team get in the playoffs, but it's yet to be seen. I knocked out so many teeth, the Tooth Fairy went bankrupt. Whose bar was that? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, not not me. Wayne. No, nope, it's way farther. New York. Way back New when. York? New York? Underrated. Underrated New York. Uh, Died too early. I knocked out so many teeth, the Tooth Fairy went bankrupt. Wait, big pun? Close. No. That era. Uh, from an album called Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. God damn, I feel like I know this. Uh, not Rock Kim. Uh, hmm. You're close again. These are legends. Mm, Think about yeah. it while uh, Michigan Hockey, they also lost in the Frozen Four. Okay. Yeah, I see your guys' brains are spinning right, right now. Craig I'm Mac? about to talk. No, hockey. not Craig. Well, Mac. Can't be Craig Mac. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to give it to you? Yeah, please. Pause. Pause. Yeah, hey, Buster hey, Rhymes. Pause. <laughs> um, Busta. No, it's not Buster. Oh, it's not Buster, but give it to, it wasn't Give It To Me, a Buster and Mariah Carey song. Give it yeah, to me. It is. Give me that. Will you give it to me? Yeah, that. I give, give it, it to you. you. Yeah. As long as you want. <laughs> you know, I got it. It was Big L. Big L. Yeah. Oh. Big L. Yeah. I was riffing with Brendan Dillinger man. about Big L yeah. um, in the in the heavyweights chat the other night. Buster but, Ryan was actually in town yesterday, too. Who? Buster R- Ryan. Really? Yeah. He was performing somewhere. Dude, his. Mm. Have you ever seen him in concert? I have not. I, I want like to see him though. live. Um, actually, him, Missy Elliott, and somebody else are coming to tour. Oh, that's epic! Wow. Yeah, that's I forgot, dope. I forgot the third person, but yeah, they're they're coming here. I think Pine Knob actually. Yeah. This season OG too. Mm-hmm. I saw Big or not Big L. Uh, rest in peace. I saw Buster Rhymes last year down in Indianapolis. I was at this conference, but he performed. Yeah, he's incredible live. Oh, you know he is. I know. I didn't know how. Like sometimes, right. like how is Buster or Twista or or some of these guys. Like how can you enunciate and get in all the bars and yeah. breathe like live? No, he's that. He's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What's the dealie? Um, Michigan hockey, quick pivot. Yeah. <laughs> they lost last night. They got shut out. Oh, they lost. Yeah. I hadn't seen Boston College. I hadn't watched a single of their game all games all year. They're so good. They got four elite players. Their goalie, Jacob Fowler, he's an NHL goalie. Um, very soon. Yeah. He turned away a bunch of high profile or high uh, high percentage chances earlier in the game. 32 out of 32 saves. Mm. BC got them. Uh, they move on to the national championship to play Denver. Uh, Kool-Aid Pistons. This yeah. is your last time in, in LCA for a Pistons game. For an actual game. Yeah, we might wind up How there for I some events and such. I did send JP a video. Maybe we can kick it off the next yesterday. segment with that. <laughs> okay. Kind of that final walk down the stairs. I did post it on socials. But I like to be able to give people kind of these uh, the looks that, we be, that we're able to get as media. I know we... Uh, we went in credentialed. Mm-hmm. We got some of the looks. Got to walk around some uh, some places that uh, you know some of the fans that they normally don't get to go to. And you know what? The Pistons they lost one twenty seven one hundred five. Demar Derozan continues to prove my point. Though that man yeah. the bag. Mm-hmm. I am sorry he plays on the wing. People keep saying he will replace Jay Ivey. Do you see the three guard? Absolutely lineups? not. Right. Do you see the three guard sets there? We yeah. talked about this. There's an Evan Fournier that plays with a Caden and an Ivy yeah. or with a Sasser and an Ivy. DeRozan, DeRozan, he gets his from the corner. He a pseudo forward anyway, yep. so that it, it fit perfect to me in in terms of like what I'm seeing. He like, still got it. Yeah, he still got mid-range it. Mid range monster, man. He still has it, man. But I, I do want to shout out Cass Tech JV baseball team. I okay, was walking Come to on. my seat at media, and I got stopped by someone. He's like, yo, 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 you cool life from Wolver Sports? Let's go. Hey. Hey. where is he at? Where is he at? And then, like his son was there, he was like, "Oh yeah, that's a dude from Wilbur Sports." And then he was like, "Look, man, yo, I'm with the uh, I'm with the Cast Tech JV team. 
They were really, really cool. I told them we would shout them out this morning. Uh, we took some pictures and such. It was a really, really dope experience, man. It was a pretty cool experience. So I definitely want to shout them out. And my guy, DJ High Def Steph as well. Um, he is uh, one of the entertainment uh, people at LCA and Motor City Cruise. Just overall good guy. When I get there early enough, man, I always try to make sure I stop by his DJ set. So I love it. By the way, Eduardo O'Neill says, hey, brother, can you tell Kool-Aid? I said this on air, please. <laughs> I used to say, why well, get a girlfriend in when I have the Lions to disappoint me? But I think Pistons fans need it more than me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hard times. <laughs> Gromit 0237. When at the grocery store, no get paper roll. bags and not plastic. Paper <laughs> won't kill you <laughs> when it's on your head at Pistons games. Just a friendly reminder. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, no, we haven't it, seen that at yeah, Pistons no. games yet. We haven't. That's we, crazy. It's time. It probably is Paper time. bag era. <laughs> I'm not calling for I mean, I get it. I get it. That's like the lowest of I, I think of Cleveland Browns. I think in shoot the Pistons are in that category. Yeah, There's I mean, no ifs ands or bot ifs ands or buts. Yep. Worst record but, in franchise yeah. history, man. Yeah, bro. So actually, I don't have any reason to tell you not to. Yep. And the Tigers, uh, quickly before we get into this next segment. Yeah. You want to talk? Hey, no, no, you're yeah. excited about them. I mean, no, yeah. I know. I, yeah. We don't know if it's even going to play. They're not going like, to play. Oh, that's nah, what they're it not going to yeah. play. Yeah. Okay, you're sad that you yeah. might not be able to see. We this, already got a double header. Team. I want to see Scooble. I, I want to see, you know, we just okay. got to meet Shelby Miller the other day. You know, get yep. a little look behind the curtain of that pitching staff. Yep. What out. a guy. Shout out Shelby Miller. Uh, Scoop was supposed to be on the mound today. They might play, what is it, 640? Uh, that was a night game. Yeah, yeah night game. So I wonder what they do. If it gets rained out, do they have a doubleheader on Sunday, like back-to-back doubleheaders? Probably, because they already got one for Saturday. Right? Yeah. Or because it's the Twins who will be back at Comerica, do they try to, you know, squeeze uh, it in later in the season? Let's make it a um, triple header on Saturday. I, screw it. <laughs> Let's shrink the pitch it. clock to five seconds, you know, yeah. because that causes Tommy John injuries. You're all right. Day. Just go from 8 a.m. to, you know, what, like 7, 7, Seriously. 8 o'clock. Just make it all day. Yeah. You know what? I you think, got that in UFC 300. <laughs> big weekend for UFC 300? Oh, yeah. Big What's weekend. going on? Big weekend for Dana White, UFC 300. There's rumor that Dana White actually might change the canvas to blue. Oh, stop what? it. Yeah, it used Go to be blue, just blue, baby. Yeah, this gray canvas. Now he might be changing it to blue. I don't really know if that's true or not. Honolulu but, blue? Yeah, uh, Who knows? Or gold blue? <laughs> it's probably more gold blue, if anything. You know, but Both I don't success. Know. Both blue with success. Both blue with success. Hey, but, fellas, clip that. Big 300. Clip that. We got uh, JB saying go blue. No. A you did. No. Party. You <laughs> did. That's factual. I heard it. No, that is nobody factual. That. Nobody but, clip it. <laughs> but hey, look. Who do you guys think the, uh, a double header, especially if it winds up being two double headers back to back, who do you think it benefits more uh, between the Tigers and the Twins? <sighs> it don't benefit the Tigers because every game they've been in so far has been damn near extra innings every single game. That's so true. I don't think that benefits them at all. Mm. But Yeah, it's tough because uh, when you're out – if your offense just has an off day, mm -hmm. and that day includes two games, oh yeah, you're screwed. Like we need this team. Yeah, you know they might be have an off day on, well, say Friday. Yeah, maybe they come alive Saturday. Yeah, but I, if you if you start if you start cold on Saturday, on you know game one. Yeah, it's not it's not well. It's tough. It's Let so alone crazy. they go into extras. I, I was gonna say it's so crazy the juxtaposition because I, I was thinking that, that their uh, relief pitching gives them an opportunity to be able to compete in double headers, but then yeah the offense has just been so non-existent that it kind of cancels out sometimes but they are seven and four mainly due to timely hitting and the bullpen the relief pitching shout out to shelby miller as well shout out shout great out. guy man I, great guy eric allen who who i, I trust in the J, says it, it probably won't be back-to-back -back double headers Broder's right they'll push one of those games out into later in the season for sure yeah so probably yeah. also because it's the twins in in division yeah um an easy reschedule versus you know, you're playing the Angels the one time they're in town right, or right. something. But we have some stuff to talk about later on the show about a former Angel, current Dodger, uh, who was a victim of victim of fraud. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> to, to the tune of like $185 million or yeah. $40 million loss. Allegedly. I I'm still don't know if I'm buying that one, but, yeah, you know. Allegedly. Right, yeah. allegedly. <laughs> this saga is allegedly. just beginning. It's something we're going to have to work out, yeah. right? You know, we're going to have to work it out like at Planet Fitness. Ooh, we're going to need hey, to go there because yeah. it's the home of the judgment-free zone, baby. <laughs> Look at Brian you feeling himself. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Feeling myself. Planet <laughs> Fitness, home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and yes, I mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals 
they have a squeaky squeaky clean gym all the equipment free weights you could ask for up to 60 pounds uh it is judgment free it truly is they got so many different types of people there for 24.99 you get the black card which gets you access to tanning salons hydro massage beds massage chairs all the extra amenities but for ten dollars a month you get just about everything definitely everything you need so check them out planet fitness where your fitness is essential place to get that big fitness energy it's planet fitness join today for just one dollar down ten dollars a month with over 2400 locations and equipment for every workout you can get in get energized and get going and with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours everyone belongs in the judgment free zone so join today for one dollar down ten dollars a month no commitment cancel any time Detroit Kool-Aid, what happens when you're on a great business for over 50 years? Tell me. You expand and you offer more products to more people. That's smart. It's exactly what Les Stanford did when they added Les Stanford Buick GNC, Brandon. They have the same great service <laughs> that customers have come to know and trust. Son, on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile Road. Check out Les Stanford also in Dearborn today at lesstanford.com, Les Stanford Chevrolet. Together, let's, let's drive. drive. All right, people, last home game of the season. We're going to take that final walk down to Media Row. Let's get it. <laughs> How you doing? Good. What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. The Detroit Pistons' last home game was last night. Wanted to give a little behind the scenes of uh, kind of walking down the stairs, down to the court area, down to the concourse. It was pretty cool, man. And it's, look it's who cool you met, too. Time. Hey! Hey! Dwayne Casey! Shout out to Dwayne. What's up, Dwayne? That's, that's, that's my guy, man. That's what a legend. Guy. Yeah, I, I actually, my first year covering the team, they had me on Zoom. They had a lot of us on Zoom. Like, for oh, that COVID people. year? It, it was just after. And they were still kind of tight with things. And so if you weren't already on the beat, they were like, hey, start off on Zoom. There were a lot of people that were there that are no longer kind of in that room. Um, so I, I, found, I count myself. Um, they don't have the resilience grateful. of you. I'm, I'm grateful. But for like the whole season, there's no picture. He just hears, hi, my name is Brandon Dent from Wilbur Sports. When I finally got the opportunity to meet him at the Jeremy Grant Classic at the end of that season, I went up and introduced myself like, hey, I'm Brandon Dent. And he finished it for me from what were sports. He's like, I know exactly who you are. You know, looked into you. A good dude, good family guy. Just, you know, keep your head down, stay humble. I had a lot of good conversations from there uh, at the end of the season. Uh, when we had the exit interviews, he actually exchanged numbers with me, told me to stay in contact, said he was going to move into a scout position for the organization. And every now and then I get a little text from him of uh, like what he's doing. For the organization, yeah. like some of the players that he might be checking out and things of that nature. And it's pretty cool. And so I see him around the arena, say what's up. But I realized we didn't have a pick. And when I was going down for the press conference, there were it. people there taking pictures. I was like, coach. And he was like, oh, what's up, Brandon Dent from Wilbur Sports? And I was like, that's love. 
dapped him up and everything, got the picture. And, I've uh, it's a cool situation. He's a great man. There's been some, you know, criticism of him as a coach. I've never heard a single bad thing said about Dwayne Casey. Absolutely. The not. man. Uh, I mean, from you, from others in, in media, from others just who have some connection to him, he's about as good of a guy as it gets. And we forget, I know the times here were, were tough, but he was the coach of the year in Toronto bef- the year before. He was coach of the year and then fired, right, in Toronto? Or or lost in – or won the NBA championship and was fired. Yeah, it was kind of like how the, the Pistons coaches kind of before Larry Brown, they, they got close, but they didn't believe that that Doug was Collins. The, the coach that could push them over the top. Nick Nurse was the guy who actually won the championship with them, but they also had Kawhi that year. That's right. But then Nick Nurse proved he wasn't really that guy. The person with the track record is actually Dwayne Casey. And uh, players around across this entire league, they love him. I, to see some of his former players come back, like Jonas Valanciunas stood up when the Pelicans came and saw Dwayne Casey was sitting behind him. It was like, yo, coach, coach, and, and did like this to him. DeMar DeRozan and a lot of his former players, Kyle Lowry, these people all speak glowingly about him. So, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to see. The former coach still with the organization gets a lot of love from the, a lot of love from the fans. Yeah. A whole lot of love from the fans. It's pretty crazy, man. Bad boys. Hey. Bad boys. By the way, real quick, a little little aside, since they got the Mark Jackson card there, and you, there, there are some, maybe some similarities. I don't want to put Dwayne Casey in that category, but do you give Mark Jackson any credit for that, for the Golden State Warriors? Absolutely. Beginning of their run? Uh, yeah. do, does that detract from the credit you give to Steve Kerr? No. Or what do you no. think about those two? I, you go ahead. Go ahead. I think the big change Steve Kerr made was the way they played small. Fair. Um, Mark Jackson assembled that team, though. Make no mistake about it. Um, early in, in the Mark Jackson tenure, Steph had a lot of ankle injuries, so we never really got to see the full Good potential point. of what the Warriors could be under Mark Jackson, but Steve Kerr got got the team. He, he opened up their offense more. They started playing more of that small ball style. Uh, no center. You know, everybody just go yeah. out there, run and gun, shoot. And that absolutely changed the league. Um, just, just you know, from how Steph can and Clay could shoot the ball. Like, um, but Mark Jackson should he should get more credit than what he what he uh, gets now. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Those teams are kind of fun when you think of Monte Ellis, Baron Davis, Stephen yeah. Jackson. Monte Ellis. Remember that Baron Davis dunk Woo! like over AK forty seven. right? That's who it was, right? Ooh. Andre Karolinko. Oh, Andre Karolinko. Goodness. And then the, the jersey and tucked the. It oh oh. Straight nastiness, straight disrespect. <laughs> Goodness, man. Oh. Yes, I remember that. I wonder what Andre Karolinko thought. I remember that. I wonder what he felt having those rests on his chin. Wild. <laughs> hey, he can't feel oh. good. You know what? what? I'm going to have you tell the people as well what we're going to be talking about today. Obviously, <laughs> we got a lot of segments today. We're going to be talking to some Lions. I'm sure Would You Rather is going to include some stuff. I mean, you know what? We talked about Mr. Andre Drummond yesterday. He didn't play. Uh, he is hurt. I after told that you play. he tweaked his ankle. Yeah, Aww. I but told you. He took a little the time. sand up there. He took the time to say, "What up, man?" Oh, did he? He did. He did. I saw him uh, where the media room is in the visitors' vomitory where media sits over. Um, you go down and he's just sitting there right there in the tunnel. I told him he loves he loves Detroit. Man. Really? Yeah. He's usually at the end of season injured players might not travel, especially if they're considered part of the regular rotation. But um, he's, he's not there. trying to get like another little contract out of the city. I, he would. He, mm. I believe. I believe he would come back if he could, man. I do. He loves it here. I'll like take him center. as a backup center, I guess. I yeah, backup yes. third yeah. string yeah. right now. That. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'd say fourth string. Yeah. I wouldn't even Maybe do third or fourth string. So. We we do need rebounding, and that's what he does. He's still best. a double double guy. So. He still c- patrols the paint. He does some good things that would definitely help this team out. But um, I just wanted to mention that man. Shout out to him. He was uh real cool last night in our conversation. I like hearing that. Yeah. Not my favorite player, but I have no connection to him. So I think of him, I just, I don't have good memories of him here, but I, <laughs> yeah. I know, I, I, I appreciate it. I'm not going to rip on the dude. Um, there were many players that deserve some blame yeah. for those years. Yeah. He's hey, just go get your money, you bro. Get the money, you're going to be the one to get the blame. Yeah. That's, that's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. So but tell the people what we're going to be talking about today on this show. Honestly, honestly, we got general topics. We want this to be driven by the chat today. We are we are playing Would You Rather with KG. We were starting that 9 o'clock, 845 actually, coming up here next segment. We're going to talk Lions, some NFL draft. If you guys want to have the Tommy John conversation that seems to be Going viral around social media just is the pitch, yeah. pitch clock and new MLB rules as the balls. Is it the sticky stuff they put on the balls? I'm definitely interested in that conversation. Balls. So 
<laughs> I mean, they do call it sticky stuff. But. They do stick them. Or so they, <laughs> there have been pitching coaches, not at mm. Michigan, but like I've been to many pitching camps, and they they teach you how to doctor the ball, uh, how to. They teach you how to cheat. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and I, I'll make a joke. Maybe I should write an article about this sometime. But, like, every time I took the mound, I cheated. It never – it didn't always affect the game. But as a lefty, yeah. like, a lefty pickoff move, especially back before the rules changed, like, that was a big part of my game. So, like, mm. before at the beginning of every inning, uh, I would go out – so, a lefty, you only get 45 degrees where you're, you're – you lift your knee. You can only, like, go towards the plate yeah. 45 degrees – so I would go before every inning when I would run out to the mound, and I would just put a little uh, imprint of my cleat at 45 degrees. Okay, so you would know. Oh, so yeah, yeah, so when would... I then push it and I go 65, 70, 75 degrees, right. and if there's any problem with it, I go, what are you talking about? Right, like, look, right. Look, look at, at the, the imprint on my foot. <laughs> so you are a master at baiting. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, Take me portmanteau. Your <laughs> That's a portmanteau, isn't it? <laughs> no, I was just like, no, I don't think I don't I wouldn't consider that cheating. That just gives you an idea of like where your foot placement needs right. to be. So not <laughs> you're not technically cheating, you're just like, all right, I know I need to be here. So otherwise, you know, this curveball, this fastball is just gonna go out of pocket to somewhere left. Right. So, right. No, hey, Mike G says he's pushing ninety degrees right now. Oh, oh wait God, a minute. Know. Yeah, that's oh, a good way to look at it though. That's a good way to look at it. Baseball is a funny <laughs> game. It is a funny game. You know what? Why don't we take a quick break right here? We're going to come back, and we're just going to get into this. Um, <laughs> yeah. What? That whole segment, man. What? You know what? Let me tell you about Dismo, you clowns. <laughs> you clowns. Visit Dismo <laughs> Dispensary. Did we stop there before the show? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Visit Dismo Dispensary today for exclusive new deals and experience the team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere. They got fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the date. It's right there on screen. 420. That's April 20th at Dispo Dispensary. They're putting on epic events. Over 1,000 giveaways at each of their locations. Stay tuned for more details. Next week, we're going to be hammering you with all of these details. So you can get high, you can get medicated, you can uh, relax. However you want to use your medication, your cannabis, recreational, or medication, medicational, medication, medical, or recreational, go get them. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis pull up. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. A network for the city, by the city. Woodward Sports is Detroit Sports. First paved road in America. Woodward Sports. The first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, guys, I have the sleeper. Mm. I have the Cinderella story. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. You got to try. You have to try this crispy chicken sandwich. It's free. It's free with a $10 purchase at Shake Shack. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's making me cough. It's so good. Grab a shake, some crispy. Yeah, that. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm going to wear that one for a while. Grab a shake, grab some crinkle fries. Happy Friday. It equals $10. Go to Chicken Shack. It is delicious. Oh that sandwich God. will be free. Just use the code Woodward. What is going in on? In person, online, or download the Shake Shack app today. Promotions available at all seven Metro Detroit locations. <laughs> what up, though, people? What? Mr. Chicago. Are you suggesting that because 
one of the detectives is a possible racist. And because there may have been some minor oversights in the investigation that it completely lets O.J. off the hook. Exact mundo. The defense wrestler. Mr. Chappelle. No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> the juice oh, is loose, man. The juice is loose. Oh. Welcome back to Echo Woolworth, man. What up, though, no people? Thank you guys for choosing to start your morning with us today. Shout out to Flannel Sam, the fifth member of this five, man. Yo, Flannel. Hey, definitely, man. Definitely. Hey, he's our vet. He's our vet. Hey, I want to go around the room real quick just because Mike G, he... Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> boy, Mike. Go blue, Mike. Oh, boy. <laughs> he said, can we get some stick em for the titty booth? Ooh. TV booth. <laughs> My bad. Shout out to Women's First MVP, JB Smooth in the TD booth. Jay Bizzle. I smell Yo, your lightsaber. You guys are saber. killing me in the chat over here. <laughs> the Detroit's number one draft pick in the sound booth, Mr. KG. You know Detroit's it. Detroit's number one draft pick. I'm going to have to find some way that uh, we can spice up that too. We have the titty booth. I need to figure out what this sound or audio booth is going to be too. We'll it's, figure it out. It's dark. It's Baiting dark. isn't cheating, John F. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> There's that titty Look residue. at that picture, though, of <laughs> Spinny and D-Mac. That is a moment they were having. Goodness. That was that opening day, onset at opening day. Yeah, it yeah. was. Mm. Shout out Mike G2. He said he used the Woodward Code at the Haggerty uh, Shake Shack store. Works like a charm for that chicken sandwich. And you can use it more than once. You can use it over and over and over again. The more you use it, the better. The better. Yeah. So you, get, you get fed. Yeah. Helps Ultimately, us. we would get fed, too. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you look at the circle of life, the evolution, you go to Woodward... Sponsor likes us more. Mm -hmm. You know you know how it all goes you from there. Yeah, go to Woodward. Got to pay the bills, man. Go to man. Shake Shack. Yeah. <laughs> and shout out to Mr. Matthew Broder, Detroit Lions, Detroit Tigers, credential B writer and Holla. reporter, a Michigan man down here. It's your boy Brandon Dan, aka Detroit Kool Aid. Your credential Detroit Pistons. That's your man, B Brandon Dan, aka Detroit Kool Aid. In the hose! I appreciate you, man. You, appreciate that energy you. just falls. Like, I got to prop you up, Kool-Aid. You're a legend around these parts of town. I appreciate you, brother. I really do, man. I, I love this squad. I do, I do, I do. If, what if, we, if, oh, if you know what I do. What? <laughs> it's a Jeezy song, my yeah. bad. Oh, uh, I thought you were going Keenan and Cal. Yeah, that's where oh, I went or that. Yeah. <laughs> Who loves orange soda? Kale loves, loves orange, orange soda. soda. Do I, is it Good Burger 2 coming I do, out? I do, I That's do. Already out. Yeah, I think oh, it's already came out. Yeah, yeah. it's on uh, not not Peacock. What's the other one? Uh, Paramount. Paramount. Yes. Yeah, that one, it's not the one. same. This so, is that the the cycle of nostalgia. Like yeah. it, it happens in trading cards. Actually, every 25, 30 years, there's like a rejuvenation, uh, uh, an uptick in the market because it's it's kids who collect it at you know. 10, 12, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. now 35, 40. They have a little bit of extra money or a kid to share their hobby with them. Yeah. Uh, Disney movies do it too. You see it every 20, oh, 25 years. They recreate or, you know, go from VHS to DVD. Like, yeah. there's a whole new marketing scheme 20 years later. Yeah. Good Burger coming back. Come on. Yeah. This is why we need Saturday Night Vibes with JB Smooth, though. <laughs> Just I think I got to get question. in on that hey, with you. Is Good Burger 2, is it, is it, is it all out? If if Saturday Night Vibes was already on was already going, you would have known. I know. Dude I know. Kept you in the loop. There were so many good ideas too. Like I, when thinking of like segments to do, I started watching like whose line is it anyway, and mm -hmm. and um, all that. Remember all that on all Nickelodeon? That, yeah, it's like, ruined now, but yeah, yeah I remember yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> I used yeah, to well, love Legends <laughs> of the Hidden Temple. That used to be my. Oh, that was thing, my favorite that game show. Used to piss me off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but these kids that are just running around this maze, and at a certain point, you have to put together a statue, and you cannot figure out how to put together three simple oh, pieces yeah, yeah, that, that of was. a fucking statue. Yeah, what is wrong with you? Get right. it. Oh, my God. It's right there. You can win. You got an opportunity I will never have, and you are wasting it. Right. You know what, JB? You are exactly right about that. The show just irritated me so much. Like, that was the show, though. I wanted to be on there so bad. So Nostalgia. Did I. So bad. No. For me, it was like Legends of the Hidden Temple, and then The Price is Right. If I could be on one of those shows, bro, man, my life would have been made. And then Legends <laughs> of the Hidden Temple got canceled. Some bad news actually about Legends of the Hidden Temple. Uh -oh. I probably shouldn't say this at all, but like a lot of the episodes were filmed all on the same day. So they had kids literally, groups of kids literally from show one to show two to show three all like in the dressing rooms for literally like eight hours trying to wow. finish just one show. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> in the dressing rooms? Yeah. I... So what are we talking about this segment? Something a little sketchy. <laughs> we, I want to talk about, do you guys hear the 13 players that are going to be in town? 
for the NFL draft. 13 confirmed prospects. Wow. Yep. I for don't, the, JJ is not invited, or did, he didn't accept the invite. Accept. Yeah, so it, it, uh, I, yeah. I believe from, from the, the messages I've got from the NFL communications who directed uh, the message to me, it's that I, I believe there's still an option for people to continue to accept. 13 seems very, very slim. It's I getting they smaller 17, every year, I feel like. Yeah, I, you should think they'd have like probably 30 or th- like, you know, the expected top 30. Yeah. And then there's a, a few that fall into the second round. But no, 13 if confirmed. A couple of Alabama players, Terry on Arnold, Dallas Turner, J.C. Latham, LSU guys, Jaden Daniels, Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunze, Darius Robinson. But no J.J. Yeah. No Michigan players. Yeah. No Michigan State players. No, lo- uh. no, no local. I, I got to imagine that. This list isn't complete, and and before, I guess they got 13 days. In the next 13 days, we're gonna hear about some. Like, yeah, at least JJ, he's the one that he's going in the first round. Yeah, yeah. but he's from what I heard, he's choosing not to go. I don't know whether that's a personal uh, decision, but I mean, I don't think the list will get much bigger, man. Because you look, it. it's getting slimmer and slimmer every year. You don't want to be that player that you you show up and then you have a draft day fall. And then they got the they got the cameras on you the whole yeah. two hours you there. A lot of people don't want to go through that. Everybody man. speculating so, like, where is this girl looking at? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, all that type of stuff. Was that Levis? Yeah, yeah that was Levis. Yep. Yeah, like it, the guy over there probably doesn't drink mayo in his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot right. that's one of your beefs. Yeah, bro, disgusting. Oh, we got chin music coming up later. I didn't even. I didn't even. Remember, I, I do wonder with some of the local players if um, there's any like local things they're going to do. You know, like, if they're going to have their own parties in the city. If they're going to have something with their family, something maybe at Michigan, something maybe in East Lansing, maybe at I Jars in Detroit, that. maybe at the Woodward Sports Party hey. in partnership with Jars. Maybe there are going to be a couple prospects there to be determined or to be announced. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yep. see. I'm going to be I, – I, I got my credentials approved, so I will be on the red carpet getting interviews nice. with these 13 boys Let's go. of that wait. group. Let's go. Anyone Let's you would want to interview – anybody you would want an interview, particularly, like, in, in this group, anyone stand out? Run the names again? Yeah, okay. me... So there's Caleb Williams. Hold on, yep. hold on. Chat family, listen to these names. Put in the chat definitely who you want Broder to interview. All right, yes. let's hear it. Top picks, Terry and Arnold. Out of Alabama, Ooh. Dallas Turner, J.C. Latham. I said the LSU boys, Jaden Daniels, Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. I will be professional and interview him if you'd like. <laughs> but you, right, you know. Terion Arnold you know. so far from Yep, me. yep. Uh, Latu, 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 out of UCLA. I'd like to see a Latu interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. You hear about his mature game. I want to hear his mature uh, yeah. interview skills. Yeah. We know the Michigan players got that. Maybe that's why they're not coming. Maybe. They got that down. Uh, uh, Drake May out of North Carolina. Quinion Mitchell out of yeah. Toledo. Talk about having a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. He, this is the smallest school. Yeah, by far. By far in this group. That's the smallest school there. Yeah. Also close to Detroit. You interview him, man. Yeah, it has to. That's Detroit yeah. Junior. And a long time ago, we were nice enough to hand Ohio back part of their state. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. I got love for the Mud Hens. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Of Remember course. when Toledo beat Michigan at the big house? Ugh. Jesus. <clears throat> Roma Dunze. <laughs> Darius uh, Robinson out of Mizzou and Caleb Williams. Definitely so, Darius Robinson. Yeah, definitely. That would be cool. Caleb Williams would be an interesting interview because you know he's yeah. going number one, so that would be an interesting interview. Ask him about one. his fingernails. Probably don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna maybe find a different question to ask him. Um, I mean, he, he would definitely give a good interview. I think so. I think he definitely would. If uh, Bo Nix's girlfriend is around, can you uh, give her a shout-out? Should, are you going to be showing me a picture when we come back out of break? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm excited. Get those in. Uh, we got more to talk about. We're going to talk lion specific, but coming right up, we got would you rather? Would yeah. word you rather? I'm wondering too, hey, JB, should we do another culture day for uh, Broder? Try and find him a, a, Absolutely. a girl within oh, the culture? We could. Let's have the chat, chat family also make those suggestions. Who should we introduce Broder to today? Maybe one or two people. We can have another uh, competition. See, Mike G is already coming with the interview questions. Says, Broder, you can always ask Marvin Harrison Jr. why he couldn't beat University of Michigan. Mm. Simple question. Simple. Simple. That would be the last interview I ever get from him. Yeah, probably. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, get ask Caleb while he paints his nails. Definitely got to go with the Toledo boy. That's right, Keys to Wisdom. Right down the road, road to Toledo. Yeah. Mm. This is the first time I said that on air, Keys to Wisdom. I'm not trying to compete with our, our, our boy. Um, but, yeah, let's talk about Guardian Alarm. Let's there are a lot that. of defenders on that list. I, that's why I'm hoping you, you, you get the opportunity to talk to uh, at least Terry and Arnold, man. That would be yeah. pretty dope. To be honest, that is probably the guy I'm looking forward to the most. That yeah. would be dope. That would be dope. And uh, you know what? If you want some defense, I know who is the top-rated defense. That is Guardian Alarm. They provide customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians, they take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. It is 24-7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night, and know that the Guardian team member will stay on the phone with you as long as needed. Technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves. Technology has been proven to work, and people have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. Once again, that number is 1-800-STAY-OUT. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre roll oh, now has yes. diamonds in it, everybody. They are constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience just for you. The perfect boost comes from their added touch of pure THC diamond dust, allowing flowers where only the highest terps are making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis, check them out at your local retailer or always check them out online at GloriousCanna.com. Glorious, glorious, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> glorious, is he smoke? Is she, are they married? Yes, they are married. I'm not talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show some respect. Uh, respect the Knicks. I mean, I, I, I was gonna say so, but I, I'll leave it. I'll let it go. <laughs> She's beautiful. She's good for you, Bo. Yeah. She's beautiful. I, I, I is that? I was, there's no entertainment value, but uh, it's his wife. Well, I guess I probably commented uh, I, on other wives before. Yeah, I was about to say, I wish you felt the same about other people's wives. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going to keep it G. I'm going to keep it G. I ain't going to give it up. Hey. She's, it, maybe it's because she was in the wedding dress. Like, they're, that's a picture they're going to cherish for the rest of their life. What, you yeah. want the cheerleader outfit one? Yes. <laughs> Eduardo in the chat, man. What, what there's so much people? heat. <laughs> what up, though, people? Welcome back. So wake up, Woolworth. Yeah, I'm not putting that one. Appreciate it. Yeah. Can't put that one. No. Appreciate y'all for kicking off your day with the Wake Up Woolworth crew. I'm telling you guys, you want to be a part of this chat family. It is epic. Uh, guys, go ahead and smash that like button. When you have encouraged somebody else to do the same, let's get this thing to 100. It's a Friday. We're having a little bit of laughs. We got some fire segments on the way as well. I lied, though. And we're to having the, a day. I lied to the people. Oh. I said we're doing Would You Rather right now. We're pushing that to nine. At nine yeah. o'clock, we're gonna go all lines second half of the show you with really a little like bit of whipping things out at nine o'clock. It's you know the start of the second hour. You yeah. just gotta show you, you know, know put it on the up. table and and get into it. I can't know? unzip like Broder, but you know exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> no, we have a little software update on the phone, so the the, yeah. the details of the show are are out in cyberspace at the moment. They are. So I, I thought for the next you know seven eight minutes we have this Tommy John Grimes conversation. Said, interview Bo Nix's wife. I would. I would. He definitely would. Would you rather? He, he does have accuracy. He knows how to throw that rock. Yeah. I had him in the last mock. I had him going 28 to the Broncos. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, That's Miles crazy. He fell all the way to 28, though. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, During he, the college season, he was like maybe three, four, you know, like. I think this probably factors in. 
Joey Harrington probably really started it, like Oregon quarterbacks, although I guess Justin Herbert. Yeah. It, it, although, that's another conversation. But you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that offense they run at Oregon. Yeah. I don't know. I think Bo Nix is – he's one of those – Veteran, uh, he's a little smaller quarterback. Like, there's something oddly resilient about him. I, although I can't admit I watched him that much because he played in Oregon. Yeah. Um. So other games are on at, at funky times, but no, I think Denver would be a perfect fit. I yeah. love G said the morning glorious. Glorious. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like that. Always. That'd be a dope show. These are actually some really great, great interview questions. I know, crazy clown. I'm so negative. Randy Smiley, that's right. Bo Nix will be great at Denver. Now look, I see you over there, kind of. Tossing that ball into the glove. Yes. You are a pitcher. And obviously, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, Justin Verlander, he kind of made some comments. And I saw these comments, like, I think last week. But they've just continued to make the rounds and the views, the engagement, the comments, everybody's opinions on this thing have just continued to grow and grow and grow and grow. And I wanted to be able to ask you, Mm. as a pitcher, what did you believe about this aspect of Tommy John What's going on with pitchers today versus, I know Justin Verlander, he had a lot to say about kind of his upbringing versus what the kids of today are going through. Like how many, just how many more pitches they're throwing uh, now it's the type as kids. Of, it, yeah, it's, it's, there are so many factors to this. And this conversation spun up again or, or it heated up in these last two weeks when Cleveland Guardians ace Shane Bieber, mm-hmm. he went down with Tommy John surgery. Uh, um, Spencer Strider with the Braves. I, I think he's having some UCL issues. I don't know. I can't remember if it's officially been announced he's having Tommy John, but he's likely going to be down for the season. But there's just this, we'll call it an epidemic of, of baseball players. Um, and, and I want to make that important. I, choose my words carefully because there are more baseball players now. It's not just pitchers. Yeah. So that's originally the majority of these Tommy John surgeries were from pitchers. Now, we saw Riley Green go down with the Tommy John injury, with Tommy John surgery on mm-hmm. his non-throwing elbow. We've seen Bryce Harper; the same thing happened to him. Yeah. These injuries are happening because these athletes, like we see in the NFL and the NBA, they're getting so big and so strong and so athletic. The elbow only has so much; it, it can only take on. so much stress. Tell yeah. the people what you told us when we were at Feldman about the the type of velocity stress that's put on. The arm. Yeah, so so you know how people do that like that robot dance move where you know their arm mm-hmm. you hit the arm and it spins in a circle. Um if you were to throw a baseball, and this is a stat that I remember back when I played, so you know, 10, 15 years ago, so it may have been updated or something, but it stuck out in my head. If you were to throw a ninety mile an hour pitch, a ninety mile ninety mile an hour fastball, mm-hmm. and your your elbow didn't just stop, you know, right here like it naturally holds. Yeah. It would spin around twenty seven times. That's oh, incredible. Wow. Twenty seven wow. times. So every yeah, time you more time. How many every times? time, twenty seven. That's wild. Every time you throw a pitch, you're you're uh trying to decelerate. Like you, you throw yeah. the pitch and all that stress is being put on the outside of your elbow. So mm-hmm. the UCL is on the inside, but the way that your elbow is That's taking crazy. all of this all of the stress. I say stress, it's the power, it, it's everything. The, these pitchers, these baseball players, they're starting to throw so hard. Yeah. They're th- starting to throw so many uh, tight, like r- really sharp off-speed pitches, sliders, curveballs, uh, cutters, things that, you know, all on the, the inside of your elbow, when you cut it and you're squeezing the ball really hard, like that's just putting so much, so much tension on the inside of your elbow. So yeah. like we see... Uh, uh, Zach, e- or, or concerns of basketball players when they get too tall, their knees, their joints, yep. their Achilles. Like, you just start seeing little nagging injuries. Your body can only withstand so much. So when baseball players, and, and I'll single out pitchers for this one, when you're throwing 100, 102 miles an hour, yep. 95 mile an hour off-speed pitches, uh, your elbow just can't hold up. Yep. Like, it can only take so much. So when that happens and when it snaps and it breaks down, that's when Tommy John happens. Now, do you think the pitch clock is is a reason for why the the injuries are going up? I don't. I don't think at all. And, and I'm not. I don't have anything medical to back this up. So there might be a small factor. Yeah. But I don't believe it's a large factor. But even 15 seconds between each pitch, or ain't that how long the pitch clock is? Yeah. 15 yeah. Seconds? And to be honest, I think that actually prevents prevents more injuries. Like the oh. longer you wait between pitches, yeah. The 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 more your elbow cools down even in 
a, a, a microcosm of a game. Like, yeah. 100 pitches, you got to cool down after the game. But in between each pitch, if you're waiting 45 seconds, a minute, yep. you have these at-bats that are taking 10, 10 minutes long, and you're throwing you know, 10 pitches to a batter yeah. trying to throw eight curveballs or eight sliders and then a changeup where you're supinating. So, you know, a, a slider, you're cutting it in like this, so you get all the pressure on your elbow. A changeup, you're supinating the other way, yeah. so there's all this nasty pressure going on. And the harder you start throwing, and we start seeing this sort of trickle down to uh, middle school, high school, yeah. the minor leagues, because the way the game has become – the way the analytics are out there, you're, you're trying to throw as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. You're trying yeah. to have the highest spin rate on your off-season pitches. All of this can be measured. You're seeing starters only have to go four or five innings. So they're giving 100% effort from the very first pitch to pitch, even if it's 85. Those are 85 pitches at 100% versus yeah. 100 or 125 pitches that started at 80%, you know, 90% Verlander. When he, was in when he was in Detroit, remember he would usually start games throwing 92, 93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the eighth, ninth inning, he's he, pumping he, 100, 101. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like, that's, that's the mentality. When I was growing up, you want to go nine innings. Right. Or right. in high school, you want to go all seven. So you just can't give 100% max effort. you got to learn to pitch to contact, try to get ground balls and double plays, especially mm -hmm. earlier in the game, so you can have your best stuff. When, the, when it's later on in the game and it's important. Yep. And so you see kids as they're looking up, uh, and this will be my, my last point of it, you're looking up at the majors and what, not only the way the game is played with starters going five innings, then a specialist each inning yeah. coming out of the bullpen throwing 100, mm -hmm. every single person, they're having success. Like, it's working. You're able yeah. to strike strike people out because it's freaking hard to hit. <laughs> yeah, you can't so hit 100 miles. if yeah. you can get that out of your body and it works, and it's your path to a $100 million contract in the bigs. These kids are starting at middle school yeah, trying to throw as can. hard as they can, trying to throw off-speed pitches as hard as they can, trying to get that spin rate and all of that. I didn't throw a curveball until my sophomore year of high school. Yeah, like That's the way we used to treat it. It's like you don't put that extra stress on a, on a developing body. Yeah, like yeah. When you're a 15-year-old, 18-year-old boy, your body is still changing. Right, like right. I've had growth plate issues. Like I, I had met massive growth spurts in high school my body hurt yeah and you know what you brought up something real interesting uh kg as it relates to the the pitch clock and i'm wondering if, if this is something as the season goes on we're able to kind of track what this does for pitchers because not only is it keeping them warmer as they're on the mound but they're also able to get back to the mound without sitting as long uh during the off innings as well it's a great they, point when the other team's up because you're right, the keeping warm is something across the, uh, the whole spectrum of sports. True. My trainer, she, um, uh, when I was in college, well, she uh, actually, after my school, she went to, to, to the Gophers, to Minnesota Gophers. And she was like, had all the science behind this stuff. I'm talking about, you know, you get done with your training, you got the electric stem devices on, you got the ice on, you got all of this and all of that to try and help with recovery. But the one thing she stated is, if you're still going to be working out, if you're still going to be doing practice, if this is a, a two-a-day or a three-a-day type of thing, you actually want to try and keep your body as warm as possible so that the body doesn't try to start to heal the stress that it was under. She said that's the place that you don't want to be in. You want to keep the body warm and active and going. And I'm wondering if this kind of shortened uh, pitch yeah. clock is actually going to be more beneficial for hopefully reducing the, the arm stress and injuries. And yeah, I, I didn't even think about it in that way. And, and I, I do see some questions in the chat. So while I'm ranting here, if you guys uh, uh, can ask some of them, that would be – that would be great, but you look, I war preparing for a game, warming up for a game as a starter and a reliever also is is huge. When I had to start my career at Michigan as a reliever, which was different than it was in high school, like there is a lot of a, a lot of stress in a short amount of time put on you, not just to go into the game and throw in high leverage situations like we see Shelby Miller going in with a runner on second right, and yeah. having having to not honestly go and get a strikeout. You know, a ground ball to the outfield, it might score that guy. So you're trying to get that strikeout, but waiting for the eighth inning and the ninth inning, you're sitting around all game. Usually it was three, four hours. Then you could start to get warmed up. That inning could take 30 minutes. Now, with the game moving much faster, you start to get to some of those things. And last thing I'll say, you brought up a good yeah. point about working out. The way people are working out and getting bigger and, and all these uh, um, CrossFit, all, like all these new enhancements to. Uh, physical therapy or, or physical 
improvements. Some are good, but unless you know what's right for your body, like pumping a bunch of bicep curls and getting big, having a really big upper body is not yeah. good for a pitcher. Like you want big lower bodies. You almost want you want to be flexible up top. You want these smaller the smaller muscles and joints in your shoulder, your rotator cuff, your biceps tendon. You want those to be firing fast. It's about yeah. being fast twitch, not having fast all this twitch. size. But yeah. it's not necessarily the case for everybody. Trevor Bauer and Garrett Cole played together at UCLA back in my time. They had two completely separate workout routines. Like Garrett Cole was the the deadlift, the squat a ton. Uh, Trevor Bauer was bands. It was it was flexibility. It was low resistance training. They both threw a hundred. They both had disgusting stuff yeah. since college, but they're just different ways. So everything needs to be individualized, which is also part of the problem. The individualization, playing baseball for twelve months, mm -hmm. that's not good for your arm. KG, what's up? No, I did have another question really quick. So um, a lot of uh, younger kids that are that are pitchers or playing baseball, they are opting to get the Tommy John surgery even before they're injured. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of that these days. Do you think that's a good thing? Or no. should you just that's wear you, utilize your arm until that injury happens? Yeah, it, I, I don't know all the medical uh, jargon, j jargon, the details behind it, but I, I don't think it's a good thing. You you don't want to have preventative, major preventative surgery if you don't have to. Yeah. Like, there is a chance you don't come back. Just because the medical world has been enhanced and improved and the the – chances of returning from Tommy John are higher than they were. Yeah. It's not a guarantee. That's true. Like, like, there are so many things that factor into that. You shouldn't just have it until you're injured. And your body needs to learn how to recover on its own. Right, Like, right. there's even people who, th there's an argument to be said about icing your arm and not icing your arm. How mm -hmm. much of that natural blood flow uh, should should you be relying on versus keeping swelling down? Keeping, mm -hmm. you know, there, baseball is a fascinating game, especially the mechanics of a pitcher. Maybe next week there's a slow motion video of Tim Lincecum, a uh, former pitcher for the Giants. Hey. Um, he was 5'10", just a little guy, but they call him the freak because yeah. he was pumping 100. But his mechanics were so unusual, so unique. His arm, there was almost no stress on his arm. If you slow it down, it looks insane. Yeah. But he uses his lower body and the leverage in his upper body to just like, his arm just comes along for the ride. Yeah. So it's just like a lever and it's just like firing that bar ball. It's incredible. It's incredible to, to see it break down, but all of that to be said, and there are factors, you know, the balls are slippery. They aren't using some of the sticky stuff. Yeah. Um, so you do have to grip it tighter. I wish I could show you guys the major league ball. It's like, it's the most slippery yeah. thing you can, it, I, I don't know how they throw a fastball. Yeah. Um, so there's so many things, but that tension you're putting on an elbow, throwing 102, yeah. that's what it is. Mm. Yeah. Man, rotor ball. I'm telling you guys, there's nothing like it. When this man starts talking baseball, I love it. Especially pitching and the mechanics and such. No, there was a couple of people. I think it was Xavier in the chat. Xavier he's D. Like, he's been waiting for you to talk pitching mechanics. We got to do this a little bit more on the show. I think so. I yeah. think so. It's great that the Tigers are doing well, so there's a little extra love for baseball. Yeah. Um, but hey, if there's some some knowledge, I can bring. Balls are slippery for sure, Mike G. I saw that. <laughs> kind of. That's a great picture. Um, yeah. No. Whenever you guys are up for it, it's. We hope to not see many Tommy John surgeries here in Detroit. Yeah, um, but we've seen it already with Casey Mize, and uh, he he appears to be coming back the right way. I know it hasn't been perfect so far, no. but he's he's had a solid couple outings. So if you look, and maybe that's the guy we'll break down next. If you look at his mechanics yeah. compared what they were compared to what they are now, yeah. And this is shout out Chris Fetter, uh, pitching coach for the Tigers, and Robin Lund, the uh, assistant pitching coach and biomechanics expert. Yeah, have really been. Um, integral in fixing or making little tweaks to these pitchers' mechanics that will help them stay healthy. Yeah, you, yeah. You'll be able to see when Casey Mize throws his split finger, like his elbow just looks like it's about to break off. Damn. But he wasn't getting enough power out of his lower body, yeah. out of his out of his core, out of his butt. You can see he's Pause. stronger. We're, it's, we're gonna okay. I'll call it a trunk. Yeah. Hey, look, um, that's what Ryan Jackson said. He said the pitching power comes from the tail. It does. It does. And and Jeff Pierce, Doctor Jeff Pierce, who's on some of the other shows. Yeah. He does have some really good points about feet and ankle mobility. Pitching it starts like literally from your toes up, and if you're not taking care of everything, your body starts over over uh, um, 
Overcompensating. Overcompensating, and that's when injuries happen. So Look, we got to get out to baseball diamond. We got to get out to a basketball court. We got to get out on a football field, and we got to get some hockey going. We gotta, we gotta get out there, especially uh, when we have someone like yourself who can talk this thing at a high level and be able to show. I think that'd be dope. Let's I do think that. That'd be really dope. Would you rather try to get a hit off me or try to strike me out? I would rather try to get a hit off you. I'll take the challenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was not my best transition. That was, <laughs> we ran over a little bit and we got to get to Would You Rather. Is your phone good to oh, go? Yeah, we're good to go. All right, let's take this break. Appreciate you guys for sitting in and listening. I kind of ranted, so we got open time here you know throughout what? the rest we of the show. Up some of these challenges. Can you get a hit off Broder? Can you outshoot Kool Aid? You know what I'm saying? We got well, that's a yes. Thanks, man. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll take that challenge, man. Look, I try to stay humble on a lot of things. Shooting, though? You got okay. it like that, huh? Got Buckets? That strap. <laughs> he said, I got that strap. <laughs> George Eagle, I got you. We got. We should make that like a gift. We should have a fan. I don't know, a fan. A chat. A viewer. Or our family. Yeah. Have like a, a competition. Yeah. The chat challenge. Like yeah. It's a nice form. That is nice form. You you spin that ball nicely, Kool Aid. <laughs> the snakehead. It's no sticky stuff on these balls. No, oh, not so yet. Oh. Hey, <laughs> <you know. laughs> JV's losing it, man. Oh, but you know what? Another challenge we got to talk about. Is it the quarterback challenge? The quarterback challenge. Hey, baseball, basketball. Now that I think about, there football. is a whole other side to this of why don't quarterbacks have Tommy John surgery? Also, the weight of the ball, how you throw a football. This need, we need more time actually, on this. I actually wanted to ask you that, too. That's crazy. But why don't quarterbacks after, get Tommy John surgery? They throw hard, too. Might be after, most, let's get through Would You Rather, and we'll revisit this maybe in Mailbag or, sure. or, or later in the show. Because sure. it's. A, I like this conversation. Yeah. It's Friday. Screw it. The QB Challenge from Shake Shack. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports. We want to remind you, it is always football season. So how would you like to win two free tickets to this season's home opener? It's a Shake Shack QB challenge. If you can throw this pig skin on a rope, you could be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location or at woodwardsports.com or scan the QR code right above me. Go get those tickets and we'll see you at the home opener. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Sports love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at WoodwardSports.com. Just click on Shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. 
Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan and the Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation is proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities. They got impactful speakers featured like Jerome, the Bus Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter. This is going to be April 24th through the 26th, right around draft time. So for more information and tickets, scan that QR code on the screen and what will be on the back wall during this segment today. What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. Thank you all for choosing to kick off your day with the boys. And you know what, man? It's time to feature Mr. Detroit's number one draft pick, Mr. KG over here. Hey, hey, look, man, we got the graphic updated with the with KG in the bottom. Can't hear you. I Woodward. You, you know you made it when you got on the graphic, so. <laughs> Hey, you do great work, man. These segments are always fire. Hey, I appreciate that, man. So the name of the game is Would You Rather. Y'all know what it is. Two options. You have to pick one, and you can give a short explanation as to why you made that choice. I got about uh, six questions or scenarios here. Um, so we'll we'll see how far we get with this. But are these are all one hundred percent reactions. We don't know any of these. You don't. I and I, I normally put my answers down. I haven't put any answers down for any of these either. So I'm doing it on the cuff. Which y'all, uh, everybody in the chat, y'all know what it is. Drop your answers in there. We will read them off. But are you guys ready? Let's do this. Let's do All right. Ready. Let Let's me set the mood. Smash that like button, folks. All right. First question. Uh, this might be a relatively easy one. Would you rather the Tigers go three out of four against the Rangers or Tigers go three out of four against the Twins? Twins. 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 Smash your division. I want them to absolutely own this division. Go in there and assert your dominance in the AL Central. It is the Twins for me. Yeah. You got to go. You got to lean on your division opponent, especially we've been talking about the division being down. Yeah. Uh, you got to take advantage of these games, especially if the Royals are playing well. Guardians are playing well. That's true. Um, but I, I, I see where you're going with that one. The World Series I, champs. I, um, I got to play devil's advocate. If, if they beat the World Series champions three out of four times. This is one of the only times we're going to see them this season, I believe. So, Only way I'll accept that if in that four-game series against the Rangers, Wyatt Langford goes over 16. <laughs> Got you. Mm. Yeah. Jeb, but, I mean, they, they can easily split with the Twins and then three out of four against the, right. the Rangers. So if they split with the Twins, then uh, I'll then we need that three out of yeah. four. It is wishful thinking, by the way. I'm, I'm aware of where the team is right now. But, <laughs> JB, <laughs> what you feel? Oh, give, give me the Twins. Easy. Pick up those easy wins, especially in your division as well, too, and then just keep rolling from there. You need this momentum to keep your team hot and keep going. So give me the Twins. All right. Do we got any in chat? We twins 100 keys to wisdom just a fan twins minnesota twins all day says the real k collins michael weary twins smiley oh, twins Smalley. dante twins gromit twins hey. Xavier D, twins jzj with the emoji for the twins hey Randy it is Smalley a sweet said division record is a tiebreaker let's go yep that shout out true. shout out killer mike it is a sweep i will pick the twins as well definitely want to see them take care of business in division make your stamp and, and let's start this thing off right, man. Let's let's make sure that we're at the top of the standing. So, number two. Number two. Let's go. Would you rather the Red Wings run it back with Derek Lalonde or the Red Wings hire Sergei Fedorov mm. as their next head coach? And this is would I rather? This is would you rather? Versus what I think Steve Eisenman is going to do or the oh. Red Wings? Well, you can give both. What I would do is I'd do Sergei. The, th the problem with me saying that is, like, I I know he is a head coach, and, and he, he's he's working his way up the coaching ranks, Ooh. and he's a Detroit Ooh, legend. The fact the that he's not in the look rafters. The I know the chat like, going to go crazy. It's for not going to happen until. Dude, put that man's jersey in the rafters, bro. You talk about things that needed to happen, no, like, seriously. Uh, 100 years ago. Seriously. Jeez. That's the key. Like, that's why the Red Wings aren't going to do that. or They need to do that. Can before. they do both at the same time? I would love that. Yeah, hire him, then retire his number one of these nights on one of these regular season games. Why not? Yeah, that would be nice. Then you talk about kind of the culture within the, the Red Wings front office now of, of former players that understood 
what it was about and they yeah. understand Steve Eisenman's vision they understand what those Red Wing teams were you know what I don't know if it's just a nostalgia I like those are the Red Wings <laughs> teams I was an absolute fan of Sergey Fedorov was that deal he was man. that deal. my gosh I'm telling you it was appointment viewing in Detroit man for, for in, in the hood yeah like, it, it, you yeah everybody knew these guys it's like yo I wouldn't mind it at all like Derek Lalon I get it I I I I, I understand it but Sergey Fedorov, man, it's Sergey. And and before JB goes, like that, at least in my memory, Sergey Fedorov and Anna Kornikova were like the first. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like the yeah. first celebrity couple, like crossover sports. Yeah, they were. Tennis, That's women's right. tennis was sort of that guy. Uh, that was big. That it was, was like huge. National news. And you think news. tennis and hockey? It's not like they were the most popular sports. Yeah. But those two is like they were both at the top of their game. Yeah. Anna Kornikova was a very good tennis player. Absolutely. Um, who just happened to be beautiful, and that helped their sport take. Like I say, it with respect, it's what a time. Yeah. Yeah. What seriously. A time. JB, how you feeling? I got to go with Sergey on this one, but this is upsetting because I know it's not going to happen. I mm-hmm. know we're just going to sit here and get alone again for another season. Like, they're not going to make a change. So I don't this, know. This question is just upsetting. Like, I don't think I, it's that far off. It's, it's not as far off as you would think, but. I would love at, I would love to hear maybe, I'm definitely DMAC, but like a, a, a tr- maybe I would take the bias out of it, but like a, a, a real hockey puck yeah. knower. Say they might know something about Lalonde's coaching versus Sergey, and like give me a real answer. Right. For me, it's more how sick would it be if Sergey Fedorov was the coach? Bro, yeah. I, I'm I'm with uh, JB on this one. I, I like it feels like something that would be an amazing thing to happen for just the culture for yeah. the Detroit Red Wings, but it's like, is it really gonna happen? Them getting another coach, I do believe that that has a high yeah. possibility. Not, high chance. not only is it gonna happen, but would it work? It don't even matter. Just give it to me. <laughs> it don't I even just, matter. I just need change. change. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got the chat. I know the chat went crazy for this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Terry says, Sergey, IT hips. Bring in Sergey, baby. Randy Smalley, Gallant. <laughs> just a van, neither. Matthew, Jesus Wisdom says, run it back. Kruger, fetter off all day. Krugs. One hundred. Rake says, damn, KG with the hard hitting questions this morning. Oh, yeah. You know I'm coming with it. Rake's, Rake is a sports knower. Yeah. Ball puck. What's the bad man? Um, the, uh, uh, I'm, I'm you know, bad man too. It's a, uh, a shuttlecock. Shuttlecock. A sh- yeah. You just wanted to say shuttlecock. Yeah, yeah it's a delivery. I, I didn't deliver it as well. Oh, my God. Shout, yeah. out, shout, shout out, out Vince Vaughn. Man. Shout out, Rick. He always supporting us, man. But, um, yeah, man, I I got to say, Sergey, man. I, I got to. Um, I know shuttlecock is funny. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed. This is the first time it's come up on this show. Oh yeah, it's that's not gonna be the last. That's such I a funny you name knew for what a sports it was. Object. You were just waiting for someone else to say. It was right on. Don't say that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You was too happy to say that, by the way, too. But uh, yeah, man. You know what I was gonna say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it would be Sergey for me. Um, like you said, you know, I'm just speaking from kind of a fan perspective. I would love to see it, but what I do know about Lalonde is. We are on the border of two straight collapses at the end of the season for the Red Wings. I don't know if he's the right guy for the job going forward. And even I know a lot's been made about the the conversation he had at the press conference where uh, he was talking about, you know, will we ever be here again? So, I, you know. I don't yeah, know. It was a, an odd response. Yeah. Hey, I know you saw Mike G's comment, Jeffy. I just heard you laugh. <laughs> <Yeah. back. laughs> no, it, that is a good wrestler name, though. I ain't going to choose. It is. Or JB it, Shuttlecock. Or the people mo- We could rename the people mover. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Remind me to never get on the people mover again if that happens. But uh, let's do one more. <laughs> all right. I got another question for y'all. Um, ooh, this one is this one is nice. Ooh. Would you rather? I like when they call it on shot. Let's rock. Would you rather <laughs> see Tom Gores spend money first, or see Chris Illich spend money first? Oh um, man, that's tough. Yeah, because I'm I'm fully on board with the Tigers' way of rebuilding right now. But Not it, spe- like I yeah. truly believe. I would be mad if they decided to start cashing out though right like if you say like okay the checkbook is fully open yeah like we're going for a world series in the next two years like chris Illich spend that money and they also don't their salary cap versus the nba chris Illich is also one known to not spend money so 
Tom Gore is at least we've seen examples of him spending money. But the Pistons are in dire need of money being spent. So, yeah. you know. Um, but do you trust the people spending the money? That's, that's the question. That's, the, this that's what, what I have a hard time with the Pistons. Who you giving that checkbook to? That's what makes this question so good. But yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Illich. I'm going to go with Tom Gores. I believe that the Tigers front office is one that is designed to be able to try and get success despite big money being spent. We talked about it kind of all offseason about this being kind of a small ball, kind of money ball type of, you know, manufacture things, rely on your pitching. I actually think that they are a little bit more robust to if Chris Ellis decides to keep the pocketbook locked up. But Tom Gores, the way that he kind of threw the money at a coach, I really want him to be able to do that with Troy Weaver at the helm. You let Stan Van Gundy go out there You're and right. throw money around. You threw money at, at Andre Drummond. Open up the pocketbook for uh, Troy Weaver. Let's see what he is because we understand that front office is more than, than just Troy Weaver because he's not the president of basketball operations. And let that man just go out there and at the very least. Do what we saw Stan Van Gundy and Dwayne Casey be able to do and put together a, a team that can at least make the playoffs at the very least. At the very least, let that man spend the money and get out the way. <laughs> JB. <laughs> I got to go with Tom Gores on this one. I'm sorry. I, I'm i interested in what the Tigers have and what they're building right now. So I don't want to sit here and just say, hey, just throw a bag at whoever you can. The Pistons need as much help as they can get. I'm sorry. I watched a little bit of that game last night, and at times, they just seem lost. Hell, I watched the 76ers game, and you were close to winning that game. But in that fourth quarter, you just let something slip away, and I don't know. I think the Pistons need a lot more help than um, what we're uh, what we're letting on. So, got to go to Gores. This is – it's – Pretty uh, 50-50, it seems, in the chat. Yeah. Tom Gores says Chase Amley. Dante151, Chris Illich. Ryan's reaction, Illich. Randy Smalley, Gores. I uh, see Tom Gores sell the team, says Nate. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. That's Paul Thomas, with Gores, it isn't money. Hire better management first. I, I think Justin mm. Fan is being sar sarcastic here. He said, I'm shocked by Kool-Aid's answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sense the sarcasm. I do, too. I knew you was picking Gores, too. When I made this, I knew you <laughs> I was I would pick him Gores. if I were you. Matthew Kruger, Illich, because the Tigers are closer. You got some little backup. Yeah. Basketball is dead to me, Ryan's reaction. Basketball. But you know what? If you pick to, Illich, man. that goes on uh, two teams, actually. True. Because you use the owners. Yeah. Thinking that way, it's like solidify both the Red Wings and the Tigers or just the Pist Pistons. Still. I Come have some blind yeah. belief that <laughs> when, when the time's right, he's going to spend. Like, I just had, I feel it. You I know, was trying to tell Neil that yesterday with, with Illich. I, I feel like it's all part of the plan. They have a plan. They're not going to do the same shit that they did with Alavila. I just don't no. I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. And how do you look Steve Eisman in the face and say, "Nah, I'm not I'm not giving you the money to get that player." Yeah. Yeah, how do you how do you do that? That's facts. Like I understand with the front office that he did go and put together for the Tigers, you might not really get that question, but how do you say no to Steve Eisman? That's facts. I would never. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Eiserman, like, I will fully admit, a call, a Steve Eiserman bought, maybe because I know the least about hockey, but, like, yeah. he is a, he's a, a hero or a legend. Like, he gets a, a longer leash than anybody. He needs a statue. No matter too. what. Yeah. He needs and to so, see his statue go up. He, he does, Absolutely. for sure. While you give your answer, before we go to break, um, JB, after KG goes, if you could, there's a tweet. In the Shohei Otani section about a, a Detroit player that we'll show on the way out. But um, if you could grab that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I think it's Chris Illich. Only because, like I said, we have examples of Tom Gore spending the money. Now, I don't agree of, of when Tom Gore usually spends the money, but he has been known to cut the check. Chris Illich, we haven't seen it. The one time we did see it, it resulted in El Mago. And that has been a stain on this organization for the last three years. Yeah. Chris Illich needs a redo. Uh, they have a young core. They're headed in the right direction. I don't think they'll do anything this year. But next year, I don't see why not, especially if they get close or win the division. Why don't you pour some money into this team? Miggy's off the books now. You mm -hmm. have no excuse. So that's just me. They'll, they'll have players coming up that, that tradable at for once. Yes. Tradable assets. Yes. Not at the big league level. Yeah. Like a so rebuild farm decide. system. Yeah. You can trade some of the younger guys, sign guys to extensions. You can go get free agents. Like you're going to have so much more flexibility. They had no no ability to do anything 
and then the decisions were bad. Right. And then, like the the person in the chat said, the Tigers are closer. Yes. Right now, the, the Pistons. We're going to be here for a while. So what do you just, have more hope of uh, kind of getting back to the playoffs between the Red Wings, the Tigers, and the Pistons? Who do you think? needs the money the most who do you believe like do you believe the tigers can get there without i mean really opening up the pocketbook the, in the pistons next clearly needed the most but yeah. i mean if, if basketball is so hard to go from worst to first like it's it's gonna take a while in terms of like basketball years but especially with a young core yeah. uh i feel like the tigers are probably the closest the red wings are technically the closest but we don't know how it's going to shake after this year. They got to make some roster shakeups after this year. We're going to see a lot of the younger talent getting called up. So I I don't know. I, but the Pistons definitely need it the most. Yeah, they need it the most. But uh, we probably want to see the Tigers and the Red Wings kind of. Uh, yeah, start to spin. Yeah. First. Yeah. Before. before that's, that's, a good, uh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Definitely. Before we go to break, um, we were talking about Shoei Otane's uh, interpreter. Scamming him, yeah. fraud, <laughs> allegedly. But you know what he needed. The, uh, one sec. Yeah. There is another robbery. Um, if you could throw that tweet up, I I, like know. I don't know why people aren't talking about this. The the show a tweet. No, it's uh, um, related to the shortstop for the Tigers. So this is, um, you know, Ipe Mizuhara. Mm -hmm. uh, you know his his. This is all being investigated by the ah. DOJ. Um, but there's a Tigers player, who people aren't talking about enough. Oh, um, oh, oh, I got, I got a, this a shortstop. Oh, you're good. You're good. I can I can totally ramble here. You know, we're talking, talking about, about this. this. Guy? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. This guy. This guy. But there there was a, good. a a caption associated, I believe, with the tweet. Well, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't grab that. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem at all. Do we know what the caption was? I'm interested now. I can I read it off to you guys? Yeah, yeah let it fly. Absolutely. <laughs> Kind of crazy how much media coverage the 16 million old <laughs> Shoy Otane thief is getting when Javi Baez is literally in the process of stealing 140 million from the Detroit oh, Tigers. The plot uh, yeah. thickens. The plot thickens. And you know oh. what though? You with her? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, the difference here is the Tigers. They clearly have Swiss insurance. <laughs> Shohei Otani, he didn't. He did. That's the thing. That's the good news. The bad news, man. Look, bad news. Insurance rates are going up in the state of Michigan. Across the board, they're just already up. The good news, though, Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's important for you to have your insurance reviewed by them. Swiss will make sure that your current carrier is not slipping in any extra fees or raising the deductible. So call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit them online at www.swissins.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. <laughs> Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy. You're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. Hey guys, I know you're sick and tired of wearing that same old Detroit sports merch. Well, it is a new era in sports wearables with new designs, amazing apparel, and the ultimate swag. Look, go to WoolworthSports.com, click on that shop tab. We are dropping new designs every single week. We got the Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's election hoodies, t-shirts. They're also on hats as well, too. We got the Tiger sweatshirts. And you know, if you're as upset as me about that damn Detroit sign, show it off with the Welcome to Detroit t-shirt as well, too. <laughs> Go to WoolworthSports.com, click on shop. Hey, get swagged out. The draft is only two weeks away. Hey, hey, that's a pretty dope back wall. I like that. I like that a lot, man. Shout out to our graphics team. Yeah. 
What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. It's been a Friday type of a show, and it's actually been one where I've uh, laughed a little bit more than I thought I would be today. So good. This has been it's been a good show, man. Come on, it's Friday, man. You know hey, it. it's Friday. I know I saw Flannel walk in as well. It was cool to see her. Was he wearing sleeves? I don't I don't know. He had on a jacket. Okay. Yeah, but Choice. he's going to have to bring in that cutoff flannel at some point in time. Maybe he saves it for the drive. Maybe. He's getting his uh, uh, open carry permit. Uh, so, or his uh, concealed <laughs> weapons permit, so oh, he yeah. can actually carry those guns out. Gun yeah. yeah, in public. Yeah. yeah. Public. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Hopefully, long drink flannel makes an appearance at the draft. Oh no, man. man. Long drink flannel, man. I'm Effie. telling y'all. Yep. He is joined. It's, it's like we have this this Mount Rushmore we're building now. It's Spinny. You know, uh, effectively anywhere Spinny, and then we got long drink flannel. We got to continue to build out this Mount Rush. I mean, like, long drink flannel was like a Jack Gawkey like performance <laughs> at opening day. I don't think y'all people understand. For everybody that was there, you know. But, man, shout out flannel, man. That's my guy. That's one hey. shiny moment. Hey. We got a couple questions yeah, left. Yeah, some more. We would do. You These are all remember. Lions, three Lions questions? Three straight Lions questions. Bring it, dude. All right. Let me get some music going here. All right. Mm, 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 Question mm, four. Mm. I feel like this is one serving one up, up over the plate, but who knows? Would you rather run it back with Michael Badgley or see Jake Bates as your new starting kicker going into 2024? I mean, it's got to be Jake Bates. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I hope I, I, I want to see that. If you're from Vayner Sports, cover your ears right now. Yeah, uh, right. There's <laughs> no disrespect. There's no disrespect. No. I, I mean, we know so little about Jake Bates, but we know he can hit a 64-yarder, a 62-yarder. Yeah, so would um, you be willing to venture into the unknown? I would. What the heck? As long as the, the part I don't know about him, can he make a, a 40 to 50-yard field goal 98% of the time? Listen, if you can make 64 and you can't make 30, then I don't know what to tell you. That's like, you just shouldn't be a kicker. There are pitchers that can throw 100, but they can't throw strikes. Like That's it, true. It's, it, you might have a big leg, but you got to be good up here, too, That's especially true. when you're 30 yards away with you know five seconds to go, and this kick yeah. ends the game. Badgley proved he can make those. How old is Jake Bates? Ooh, how That's old is that, Master? That. Because I know Badgley's a veteran. He's been in the I league for a little bit. <laughs> 24. From mm. Tom Tomball, Texas. 24. He's 5'10. I hey. don't know, man. What do you guys think? Jake Bates? Badgley? Uh, can we just All right, you this? go. I'm doing uh, Bates. I'm doing Bates. <laughs> you doing Bates? I'm doing Bates, I'm Bates? doing Bates, man. All right. Okay. What about you, JB? Uh, can we just leave that roster spot open? Let's, no no field goals. We're just going for it all the time. Just, just straight. Every, just... every single time. But, <laughs> but no. Uh, Dan Campbell he, would do that, too. He would do that. Give me Jake Bates on this one. Give give these UFL guys some credit. Like, they, they are playing their asses off. And you know what? I'd rather go with a change than what we have right now just because what we have right now doesn't seem to be working or no one seems to care about. So yeah. give me Jake Bates. And, and the reason why I would take that flyer on Bates is because of the style the kind of game that Dan Campbell calls. I, if Jake Bate continues to prove himself to be somebody that can kick these long field goals in forward field, I think that that reduces the chances. If you know that Dan Campbell, if they're within the 40, is just gonna go for it on fourth down every single time. If that's what he's gonna do, then why not take the flyer on a person who, you know what, we're at the 50, we're at the 50, we're at the 45, Let's give this chance to Bates, who's proven in this stadium that he can make those field goals. Yeah. I would take a flyer on it, man. I don't see one Michael Badgley. Jesus Christ. No, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I see a, a Prater. I see a Matt Prater. Hey, shout out Matt Prater, man. Hey. Ryan's Lions. Go get Master Bates. You're baiting for Bates. Let him try Master out. Master Bates. Yeah. Baiting for Bates. That's what it is. What did you say, Jay? What did Baiting you say, for Bates. <laughs> Campbell will never trust his That's kicker. That's what the chat said. What did you I say? Said. KG said, he said uh, you said oh, Master Bates. What? <laughs> what movie is the Bates what Motel man? from? Uh, oh, what movie? Uh, yeah. Wait, I thought that was the name of the show, Bates Motel. It might be. Uh, there yeah, is but it started show, from a movie, yeah. first name Alfred. Oh, oh Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Psycho. Right. Psycho. Psycho. It's a classic. It is classic. a classic. Yeah. Well, we have Shuttlecock and we have a Hitchcock reference today. It's crazy, man. Oh, the chat knows all about psycho. That's what I'm talking about, you D-Gens. Well, psycho, psycho, psycho. Eric. It's a classic. The young IT hips. This yeah. is a good movie. Yeah. Janet Lee. Lay? Lee? George Eagle. The is answer that is. <laughs> George Eagle said the answer is my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hope she doesn't. Uh, Psycho. I hope she doesn't watch World Sports. I like American Psycho a little better. That's the one with uh, Christian Bale, right? Yeah, Patrick oh, yeah. Bateman. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Psycho. He was crazy. But, Epic movie though. Yeah. Um, it is a sweet man. I, it's got to be Jake Bates, man. And I, I know that's not much of a surprise for me seeing how critical I've been of Michael Badgley. And this is no disrespect to him, but the Lions offense would absolutely be that much more lethal if they get stopped on the 40 and they send a Great kicker point. out mm -hmm. to go get three points every time. Do you realize like how, how much that would elevate this team? You just sold hit, it for me, actually. If we can hit 60, 50 to 60 yarders, that absolutely changes the the what this team can do. Mm -hmm. So and, and with Jack Fox holding the field, he's the field goal holder. Yeah. He arguably has the third strongest arm on this team right now. Mm. I say that seriously, 100%. Yeah. The dude can sling it. It's serious yeah. and funny. So what they can do on fourth down, even in field goals, at the best special teams player in the in the league. That would hey. be crazy. And they're saving all these roster spots with Malcolm playing seven positions. Yeah. When they draft <laughs> Mikey Sanwer still or Shoney Vaki, they're going to have three players taking up like half their roster. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> Let's go. All Let's right. Go. So, what would you rather? It's funny we brought up Dan Campbell because that's the next question. Let's go. Mm, this one is gonna. Me. This one is gonna trigger some people. Campbell soup. Would you rather see a less aggressive Dan Campbell? No. Or Dan Campbell stay the same? Think about it. Think stay about the it. exact same. Stay the same. Stay the same. And you right. said aggressive, so I, I'm gonna separate aggressive from reckless. I want him to have the same attitude. Make the right call, but but lean lean towards himself. Stay yeah. the same. And, and the reason why I'm going to say stay the same is because I don't believe that all of his gambles, as people would call it, were just because he wanted to. I also believe that personnel, both his belief in his offense, also maybe had a little bit of concern with the kicking. So if they but bring in a guy like this, they, they were might trust, get a he good might kicker. actually go to that kicker which would be the right call. I do believe that Dan Campbell has been making largely the right calls. The percentages support that, though there have been a couple games where in those big moments, it didn't necessarily work out for them because of a lack of execution. So I'm going to say stay the same, but from the perspective of I believe if he had the personnel, he would probably utilize that personnel more. In the and be a little less aggressive. Yeah. Jay Bizzle. I gotta agree with you guys once again. Do stay the same, or hell, if anything, be a little bit more aggressive. Ooh. Have, have faith, Ooh. have faith in the guys that you have on that bench and you put out there every single week to know that hey, they want to win just as much as you do. Hell, so be more aggressive. I'm not <laughs> mad at that. I I, I kind of feel where the chat is at, but where is the chat at? Here on Mark M says stay the same. Unless we need to win in the game, then take the field goal in the third quarter <laughs> versus the 49ers. <laughs> a lot of stay the same, though. Stay the same, Ginger Nation. Same all day, every day, Mike Reed. Eric Allen, 6.9% less aggressive if he has a competent kicker, which would give us a chance. Uh, be himself just a fan. Nope. Stay the same, says Xavier D. Randy Smalley in a few, but he is learning. Chase Amley, he is learning. He's improved each year. He has. Yeah. And I, I expect the that. same. So stay the same, but learn from your mistakes. Yes. Hey, I would I like say be less aggressive, but only by like 10%. Like, or like somebody in the 6.9. Yeah. Like, seriously, just dial it back <laughs> a touch. Just a touch. But, Kool Aid, to your point, I do think it has something to do with the kicker. I don't know if he 100% trusts Michael Badgley, even though he did hit one in the playoffs that was pretty long. Um, I just, I don't know. Maybe with a, a Jake Bates or somebody that can hit a 50 yarder consistently, maybe that changes. Maybe he does kick more field goals. I don't want Dan Campbell to stop being aggressive though. That's not what I'm saying by any stretch of the yeah. imagination. That's what got us here is him being the way he is. He's also kind of changing the league into more of a be more aggressive type league. So I want him to stay on that, but just in certain situations, don't react out of emotion. Send the kicker out there and live or die on it. It's, it, it sometimes it's going like to work. Dallas, the second opportunity in Dallas. And third. And third. But there, down for what? There have been moments where he got a little too emotional and he was reacting off of emotion. I, I want to see a little bit less of that. Just a little bit. You made such a great point about the offense. Like, just how short of a field they would – like, how dangerous that would be. I'm and with the new you. kickoff rules. Yes. Like, the, the one where – what was it if it – the one where it goes out to the 40. Like, if you kick it into the ends, I yeah. got to review them again. But, like, you could start at the 40, or even if it's just a 25, and you got to get to the opponent's 
40? Yeah. Like, you got to go 30, 40 yard? Bro. Yeah, I'm telling you. It would be a whole different look to this team. But that, that, that would be me. Just be a tad less aggressive, Dan. But with that being said, we have arrived at our last question. I feel like this Ooh, one is going. I, I don't know why I thought we were done. I'm like, yo, yeah, we got one more. We got one more, Let's man. Let's go. And I, I'm really interested to see where we sit on this one. Pause. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> would you rather Jared Goff get his extension first or I'm in Ross St. Brown? Get his extension first. Can they like sign at the same time? No, they cannot. Like, not in this scenario. Have a moment. One will get it this off season. The next will get it the next off season. Maybe. What do you want him to do? Just I'm not St. Brown. Just, I'm not St. Brown. You want St. Brown to get his extension yeah. first? Partially because you have a little bit of flex. Like you technically don't have to extend Jared Goff, but. And, and it's, you could actually use probably the same argument for golf, but with Amara St. Brown, the longer you wait, Justin Jefferson's going to get 30 plus. Yeah. Like, like you got to lock him in under 30, and he's worth it. Absolutely. You, you want to get him at where, when he's worth 25, 27 million, right, which is right. still the top of the league. Yeah. It's about to get to be 30 plus. Oh, absolutely. Like, get, lock that in. Of course, that was quarterback market's the same, but. but you don't think of my ride? I think he's like intentionally taking a, a slightly like pay cut because he could get 30, like you said. But I think he's maybe leaning toward 27, 28 to help the team. Yeah, my, my question it's was going to be about that. It's like, does how much more does Jared Goff, if he has a very, very successful season, I feel like his contract is the one that if you wait until next offseason can actually cost you a little bit more than if you wait until next offseason to sign Amon Ra. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You do have Hen and Hooker waiting in the balance. Like, you have a back, a cheap backup do. plan. I don't know if you can replicate. And I don't want to say you can just replace Goff, but, yeah, but that's technically the, you can. That's like, the unknown. Yeah, like you might not be able to replace his production, yeah. but in terms of filling that roster spot with some potential at a cheaper value, I don't know if you can – you can't find another Amon Ross St. Brown. Like, like, you sure? In a, in a league where wide receivers are becoming more and more expendable? Not saying he is. I'm just saying. That's a good point. I th There's got to be some bias in it with me, but I think he's such a unique type of number one mm -hmm. and is so perfect for this team, for the city, for this offense, for Jared Goff. Yeah. Like, but you're going to let him go the last year of his contract, not giving him nothing after he got you to an NFC title that's game. That's the thing. You Maybe a Super Bowl next year. You can't do that. You have to take it. You have to. You have to reward the players that got through the hard times with you. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that performed when everyone was against you. They stuck through it. They, you, you reward him so that the other people coming up for contract next, they know how much work has to go in to earn. To earn. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say Brown has earned the contract. Jared Goff has too. But, like, this is the first homegrown player coming up the ranks. Yeah, in the Dan Campbell. He embodies regime, the toughness. Yeah. Everything about this team is Amon Ross St. Brown. And he's produced like a number one. I mean, if you put it that way, pay that you man, right? You reward him. <laughs> you have to. It sets like the tone for every tough. Also, Josh Allen just got $150 million. Josh Allen, the defender. So mm -hmm. Hutch is going to be really expensive. That's true. Yeah. That's Ooh. true. Kool-Aid. This is, this is tough, man. Well, because of the philosophy he just laid out there, I have to go with uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. I really do. It, it is a tough question. These are great questions, great segment. But George Eagle, 100%. Though, if you that. want somebody to buy into your culture, the culture has to pay you back. Mm, that's a bar. And I think they will. That is a bar, George yeah. Eagle. That's what they said they want to do as well. They said that their plan was to get these homegrown drafted players and be able to reward them for the work that they put in. I think to, uh, up to this point, one thing we've been able to point out on this show multiple times is that they've called their shot and they've hit their shot. You don't want to see them start to falter or go away from the things that they're saying from the front office and as coaches because then your players are going to be able to see through a little bit of that. You yeah. don't want them to think that there's a potential for that wool to be pulled over their eyes. You want them to be able to believe in everything that you say. And I do believe that that plays a big part in some of the success they've had. Yeah, like, But you don't think by locking up the most important player on your team? Is that, it a quarterback? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. Well, well, quarter, yeah, it's the most important position on your team. You don't think that shows the rest of the locker room? Like... Okay, they're serious. Like, I think it does show the, uh, the rest of the locker room something, but I do believe that with quarterbacks, the economy is just a little bit different. And not just how you spend, but the fact that you always know that's the important guy. A wide receiver can go another year and say, am I really that important? Mm. The quarterback knows exactly who he is on any given team. Even trash quarterbacks that's true. get paid, bro. They that's get true. paid. So it's like 
Jared Goff, I, I don't think that he has that worry. But when you look across at some of these other players that you drafted, including some of the ones that are deaf pieces, some of the ones that are kind of versatile, and who are going to put in that work and say, you know what, we'll answer to this organization to do anything that they ask us to do because we know that they take care of theirs, I do believe that that matters as well. This is an organization that paid Jalen Reeves Maven. Paid the yeah. top special yeah. teams player. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Robert Swift and Xavier D have a really good point about it is easier to replace a wide receiver, which makes this this debate so interesting because that's a great one. Bro. I, I think Amon is so unique. Like you're, there's no argument. There are there, you can more easily replace that position. There are a lot of great ones out there, and more coming. But there's something special about Amon Ra. You can't. It's hard to deny that. Take a phone call. But um, there's really no wrong answer either way you go with this, but I, I do understand where you're getting at. JB, do you have an answer for us? I got to go with Amara St. Brown on this one. No disrespect to Jared Goff and yeah. everything. Just a simple Stop being so negative, JB. Just, just a simple <laughs> fact that like, you don't have to resign him, but I do agree with you. He, You do need to reward him for everything that he has done for the Lions and all the criticism that he's gone through and just like taking that off of shoulder, especially what he'll do with us you know, this year. But I've always stayed behind my guy, Hendon Hooker. He is my guy, and I would like to see what he can do. I, I know that's probably not going to happen for another year or two, but at the same time, like that's my dude right there. You so, rolling Hendon out, I, man. I've, I've always, you got a proven commodity. I've always had faith in this dude, and I've wanted him in the draft for us to take, so I, I'm going to stay by it. Give me Hendon Hooker to start in the next year or two. I'm about, interested to see what the chat says. Yeah, how about this from Max Mayer? St. Brown will be a player with the C patch soon. He's more than a wide receiver. Fantastic way That's to describe it. That's a good um, point. Where's Matthew Kruger had a good comment. Remember when Andy Dalton took the Bengals to the playoffs, then got signed long-term and never went any further than the first time. Take me to the Super Bowl, and I'll mm. pay Goff. Show me. <sighs> there, are, there are arguments on both sides. Yeah. With Goff, you have flexibility, says Robert Stevens. Um, uh, in two to three years, and in Hooker is 30, says Ryan's reaction. <laughs> um, pay Goff, Sewell, Hutch, this year on Mark M. It's 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 a great conversation because you're it's easier to get worse at quarterback. You guys know I'm I'm a golf supporter. Yeah. Like some have called me a you know gobbler. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I guess they're not negative. Um, I, it's 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 a great conversation. It is great, especially when you you know kind of contrast this up against quarterbacks in the Detroit Lions history. This quarterback has gotten his places. He's done the impossible. No other has. Yeah. And it's just like, you know what? And it could be more to go. We don't know, but it could be more to come. Man. So. That's I, it. That's a great What segment. about you, KG? That's before we hit break, segment. we got JB. What's training with JB Smooth? Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and make this brief. I, I You got to go, JG, man. You can't keep playing with fire because the, the quarterback market will – just look at the, the wide receiver contract as a cheaper contract in general. Not to mention that they are more expendable in terms of, like, you know, where the league is going and things of that nature. Not saying the Ra is, but um, if you let Goff get into the final year of his contract, let's say he, he gets us to another NFC title game, he makes a Super Bowl appearance. I, I jump, <laughs> You're playing with fire because... If you try to franchise tag this man, he may take that the wrong way. I don't think he's looking for the franchise tag. You kind of heard it in the interview. He's confident that he's going to be here. So I, oh, I think yeah. you need to lock <laughs> him up first and then take care of Amon Ra. They will eventually get to Amon Ra, but in terms of money right now, the market's moving. You need to lock him up now before that price gets even higher and then you're in a, a stickier situation. Whether you want to franchise tag him, roll out Hendon Hooker, or try to, to re-sign them at a, a way higher price, maybe $10 million more than it would have been if you just went ahead and did it this offseason. Yeah. Hey, I mean, whichever one they decide to sign first, it's going to be awesome regardless. And you know what else is awesome? What? You know, let me say Wicked? this like, let me say this like Jared Goff. <laughs> I, know, you know, I know I'm going to be back next year. I know I'm going to be running things. Because I'm awesome. And awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's haircuts for a minute. Let it, listen, stop in, sit back, relax, and let one of Lady Jane's great hairstylists make you look and feel amazing. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. It's Lady Jane's. It's wicked awesome.
Hey, could you start hey. that one over, hey, Mr. Yeah, Kool-Aid? Yeah, you know, I was just letting the people know. Look, we got a whole house full of pets now. You know, out octopus. I can't keep him in the proverbial dog house. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he sees some playoff action. If not, though, I'll still give my pet the best. Premier Pet Supplies, hands down Michigan's best pet store. Uh, same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers with one major difference. They've been family and locally owned for over 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food and nutrition experts to help you give your pet the best at premierpetsupply.com. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold, from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Hi, my diamonds, it's Crystal with an X. You wanna get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Woodward Sports has your Detroit sports coverage all day long. Y'all know what it is. Wake up, Woodward, every day, 8 to 10 in the morning. And right after that, we got the golden voice of Neil Rule and Red Wings legend Darren McCarty and also KG on Big D Energy every day, 11 to <laughs> Let's go. You know I got to plug myself, Let's man. Go. Then after that, you got Michigan great Braylon Edwards and Ryan Armani and Maz with Armani and Edwards with Maz every day, 2 to 4. Finish your night off with the heavyweights, man. Y'all know what it is. Spin more racks. Easy. They always bring in the fire. Always bring in the jokes in the culture. So, you know what it is, man. Woolworth Sports is Detroit Sports Network all day long on air and social media. Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. It's time for that time, man. I think you guys know what it is. Smash that like button for this segment. It's time for the most electrifying segment in sports entertainment. If you smell what JB Smooth is cooking with what's trending. Jay Bizzle. Let's go. <laughs> what's up, fellas? What's up? Hey, look, I'll start off with this one just so, you know, we, we get this out of the way because I do have a couple videos for you guys. Did you check <laughs> out Wimby's prototype shoe that came out? I saw that in what? I didn't. Whatever, I as long as it covers out. his toes. What? Holy shit. What is look, that? Look at this thing. I don't even know what, what to describe this. I can't even tell y'all what that looks like. It looks like a spaceship. What yeah. Is, yeah. Like, what? Where's Xenon Girl of the 21st Century? Bro. This looks, looks like a soccer this? shoe. The top view. I no, can't people tell you what that looks like from that people, view. Someone is actually going to buy this. People will buy that. They're going to. They have to. Especially shoe collectors. How can you not? Exactly. And think about what the Yeezys are. Like, there are some crazy looking like Yeezys and Yeezy slides. And, and people wear the, the hell out of those. Oh, my God. So it, somebody will definitely, you know what they kind of remind me of? You know the self tie uh, Nike. Yeah, yeah. They kind of remind me of those, just a shorter version. Yeah, it's the, like a. You remember those old box car races, like where you create like mm -hmm. you know uh, wooden cars as a kid, or, yeah, or the yeah. ones they drove in uh, the the modern version of Little Rascals. Yeah, yeah. like that shoe looks like a box car. It kind of does. Kind of yeah. reminds me of like the zip up shoes to the ones that zip. Yeah. Shoes. yeah. Oh, like the yeah. old AIs and some of the Nike ones like that. That's kind of the what it reminds me of as well. Yeah. Well, I don't the, know what they were going with, but I mean, hopefully it sells. It's going to sell. I'm probably not buying it, I but that's they call Wimby an alien. Like, I wonder what type of uh, yeah. marketing is going to be around this oh, type it's gonna of stuff. Oh, it's going to be wild, too. I think it's going to be wild. If they can tie it all together, hey, listen, man, the marketing makes it. The marketing makes it. We saw we saw Fila sell a whole bunch of Grand Hills because of the marketing. <laughs> yeah. That all ended abruptly, though. That That is true as well, too. All right, shout out to Travis Kelsey, because how else are you supposed to walk the stage other than Travis Kelsey-like? 
Oh, is he? He graduated from Cincy, everybody, and uh, he shoved a beer on stage while getting his diploma. Not mad at it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Give me my degree. I'm out. So, no Taylor Swift in attendance? Nah. I'm pretty sure the arena couldn't handle it. Yeah. So, I love Travis Kelsey. I don't really like that. You I, I mean, I, it it doesn't really matter to me, but that, I think it's kind of lame. You having a Sam Flannel moment right now. <laughs> this sorry. Is, this is on brand for Flannel. I sorry. I'm just gonna be on it. Like I, I think he's hilarious. Uh -oh. I, I, I like him as a player, uh -oh. and I think he's a great personality. Off. You're not saying do, the wall. You're saying the chugging the beer. Yeah. Okay. Like, do we have? It's the just like police? of course. They're, 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 yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> it's just like it seems like that's just an attention grabbing. Like. That's everyone else's graduation day, too. They all know you're there, and they're probably looking up, where's Taylor Swift? I'm going to bring more, just chug a... That's I why mean, I, I want to see him do that at a hockey game. I did the Dougie when I walked across the stage for Specs Howard. So I yeah, did, but... Yeah, we all did something. It, what what were 100% of the eyes in, in that on that day on you already? Yeah. Like, that was your mm -hmm. thing. I, I don't mean to... I don't want to disrespect your, your fun. I, no, I think that real. stuff is fun, but for Travis Kelsey, like, get your diploma and... You're right. Keep Move it on. Moving. Keep it moving. So I said Taylor it. Swift is dating college guys now. I guess so. Uh, I guess so. Oh. Interesting. That's quite the shirt on that guy. Xavier exactly. D said Broder does. He said Broder got a good point. Coming this way. He KG. got some people. Oh. Oh, that's a oh, wild yeah. shirt. Oh wow. Oh, it's a kiss shirt. Wild. Wow. Oh. JBZ. That is a very wild shirt. Now I guarantee you, you will not know how this video ends. And I'm going to try and pause it for you <laughs> once I uh, actually find it back up here again. But I guarantee you, you will not know how this video ends. Oh! oh! That's his fault. That's his fault. Is that TJ McConnell? And he hit the layup. <laughs> That's his one fault. More, one more again. Rosenberger. Look, look. One, one more. Again. more. I look, love look this. At this. As a okay, hooper. he drops him. He took way too long to take the like, jumper. You think you're going to embarrass me? Take the jumper. What are you doing? Shoot the J. And then you Shoot get back it. lazy Shoot on it. defense. Oh. Yeah, that, that was all on him. Let's go. He shouldn't have man. been guarding him anyway, but. Yeah, that, that's his fault. Man. Let's go number 77. Right. That goes that's I'm a 77 effort. fan. Yeah, don't just get get embarrassed like that. Get up and, and fight for yourself, man. That's the that's type of player Dan Hurley's starting to recruit. <laughs> I like that, man. I like that. It's the shooter's that, that's, fault, that's, though. That's, that's all way out too effort. long. All out effort there. And lastly, I will leave you with this because back by popular demand, coaching culture with Broder. Let's hey! go. All Wait, right. before we do it, can I tell you about some crispy chicken? Absolutely. <laughs> Get the chicken. See, there's a little subtle racism there. Yeah. The, the, the culture <laughs> segment and Broder is going to tell you about chicken. And, and chicken. Feldman Chevrolet as well. You want me to do Feldman first? Uh, it doesn't matter either. All right, Feldman Chevrolet. Chicken. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide first class, quick, convenient car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. They have 18 locations, so there's got to be a dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. You also catch us there every other Tuesday at Feldman Chevrolet of Novi. That's Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer, and Detroit's number one crispy chicken is back. The Nashville Hot is back at Sorokis. They got fresh, crispy Nashville Hot Chicken tenders, Nashville Hot Chicken sandwich, Nashville Hot Loaded Fries, and their newest Nashville Hot Pizza. Amazing. This limited time offer is a must try. So visit Sorokis.com to place your order online or stop at one of their 11 convenient locations for all of your needs. Give me some chicken. Get, get yourself some chicken. chicken. All right, bro. Get the chicken. So we got get one for chicken. you right now. She's a little bit over, a little bit older, around 38 or Age so. Age only matters with wine and cheese. Ooh, exactly. I like that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. She is a singer, songwriter. Unfortunately, she is married, but... Oh. But I'm pretty that ain't sure never stopped Broder before. Is yeah, this, uh, never stopped Broder <laughs> I wonder before. if this is uh, just because there's a goalie doesn't mean he can't score. Do you yeah. have an idea who this could be? I, I think it, 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 is she uh, married to a football player? She is married to a football player, and her ex just dropped a uh, uh, banger of an album. Oh, I think I did uh, oh, last night. Her oh, ex just dropped what? Oh, oh, her ex I just dropped a the... banger of an album last night, ladies and gentlemen. I present it to you, Miss Sierra. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, pick, 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 pick. 
Right. She looks amazing. All right, so Broder and, and Russell Wilson get into a fight for Sierra. Who wins? Broder. I crush Broder. him. Yeah. Broder. <laughs> I absolutely Broder. crush him. Is that a would you rather? Yes. <laughs> would you rather Broder or Russell Wilson win the fight? He can't handle <laughs> my goodies. Oh, oh wait, oh wait a minute. God. That's a concern. That's a pause. <laughs> I see what you did there, but you probably shouldn't have did there. Yeah. <laughs> I got beef that. with Russell Wilson, actually. He scammed. He scammed me and others. In a in an NFT project a they couple years ago, yeah. yeah, you're starting a, a hydration company that put a little money into, and uh, they pulled the rug. Really? Yeah, Ooh. scam. Russell wow. Wilson, yeah, so you. So y'all got beef? Yeah. Oh, Him. they got street beef. Definitely. Him and uh, that dude who uh, left uh, the Pistons to go out and play in Portland, who everyone wants back. Scammer. Jeremy Grant. Scammer. Oh. Wait, what? Scammer. What? Not a winning person. <laughs> That's crazy. Bro, Sierra, got though. Real street beef out here. With Russell I got Wilson street beef. Russell Wilson Grant? is five hundred of my you dollars. Find out that Sierra was the mastermind. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Good answer. You'd be like, it's all right, babe. You're right. Yeah. It's okay. Good answer. Good answer. Man. Yeah. As long as she doesn't look like a boy, um, you know. <laughs> oh my. <God>. What? <laughs> she can paint it black if I she got wants. The reference. I definitely yeah, got the we, reference. We got the reference. <laughs> What? Broder, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to one-two yeah, step around this. <laughs> but that's it Chase for what's trending, you guys. Back to you on the Shout test. out to Chase Amley. He said Broder's about them goodies. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, JV Smooth. Give me that. Great what's trending. We got to give Broder some with love. the great segment as well. Would, would you rather? And look, I know we were going to have a chin music. I do have one. Before. Yeah, we got to hear yours. Yeah, and, and you know what? If you guys got chin music as well, Melbag, maybe we'll take a minute or two and be able to read some. And you want to tell you what Chim music is all about, <laughs> Mr. Matthew Broder? Her chat is amazing. Yeah, Chim music is you got beef with somebody, something, something, some sports topic or whatever you want, whatever topic from this past week. Who are you throwing that fastball up and into? We know oh. who your uh, Chim music is. Jeremy I, we're Grant going. We're, yes. Yeah, no. yeah no, boom. You're Sold. Just, you're right. Russell Jeremy Wilson's Grant recent. Russell this Wilson. was just in the last two weeks we learned of the Russell Wilson rug pull. Um, wow. Because he doesn't have enough money already. Right. Um, no, T3, but what's yours? Baby. Hey, mine is this. The Detroit Pistons. <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> just It's not just because they've had a bad season. You can't go and set the franchise low in wins, and they secured that last night oh, with that loss. They are now going to set the franchise's low in wins. It was previously 16 and 66. Uh, I believe it was the 1980, 1981 Pistons, I believe, when trader Jack McCloskey had just taken over. They were uh, brooming out Dick Vitale because that was a train wreck. I love Dick Vitale, the person, uh, not yeah. as a Pistons coach, Horrible though. Was as Horrible a coach. as a coach. And that's what kind of spurred or was the foundation of the Detroit Bad Boys. They did not get that bad ever. They only moved forward in incremental wins until about Isaiah Thomas's second year where you could tell this is going to be he's the guy. The Detroit Pistons, man, 13 wins, and it looks like they may finish with 13 wins to set a low for this franchise. It, I'm telling y'all, that's who my Tim music is queued up for. This shouldn't have happened, man. This shouldn't have happened. There's no excuses for this on any level. I don't care who was injured. I don't care who was out. I don't care how young the team is. None of that matters. They had this thing <laughs> lined up to be able to go out there and, and make sure that you at the very least tied this thing. But nope, they want to set it by a couple games. That's my chin music, man. <laughs> chin music to John Cena's hair. He tried so hard to keep that bald spot on. I Chase swear, Hamley. He, really he need to let that shit go. It's gone. Yes. It's gone, John. I like that chin music with the piss. Now that you don't have to be in the building anymore, you're like, you're right. He let it. He, <laughs> <let, laughs> he turned it up now. Let it out. It's like in the, the last game of a baseball series. You're, right. so you're not going to play them the rest of the year. Cool and you throw up and shit, in. Man, he's tired. Hey, soon my Tim music is about to be with the uh, NBA draft lottery because they're going to get screwed again. Oh, yeah. Oh, get see, already again. Know yeah. Again. Pick seven, probably. Well, well <laughs> would pick one actually be getting screwed this year? Like, getting it this year? Well, when you talk is about. kind of getting screwed. I mean, Alex Sar, I mean, some he can help a team. I don't well, know like, if he's helping us. But. Like, of course, we would get it with Alex Sar and not Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, true. But. Yeah. It, the reason why getting a number one pick is important, even in a down draft, is because draft compensation still holds yeah, some value. You could trade it, yeah. Yeah, you could trade that thing. And number one in this draft is worth a lot more than number five in this draft. Adam far. Silver don't like us, though. By the way, Man. Todd's saying, how many of you were saying they should win 30 to 35 games this year? 
I, I mean, was. That was. I, a, I, I thirty two was my my prediction. That it was a reasonable expectation. Said, nobody 20, expected it to be this bad. It was going to be bad, but nobody expected it to be like this. Yeah, yeah. I said twenty nine wins on Woodward Knights. That's what I said. I said that if they had, you know, shout out to the OG show. Oh yeah. And, but I said, if they had catastrophic injury, you're going to see this squad win 20 games. Yeah. They had the catastrophic injury, and they won 13 Hell, games. Lindsey said 40. Yeah, and playoffs. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was, like I said, it was just wasn't supposed to be this bad this year. I, I just don't know, man. It? After the first week, it was just like the season folded. And I, I don't know how they fix it going forward, but they just need to fix it. In the NBA, you could turn things around quickly, but you got to spend the money right. And that's the that's the big thing now. And who know? wants to come here? It, that doesn't <laughs> matter in the NBA. You could pay people to come. You, you really can't. Oh, wait, whoa. Well. Goodness gracious. You can pay people to come to Detroit. Let me finish that whole <laughs> entire <laughs> sentence. Oh! <laughs> I didn't even realize it. <laughs> you, you can't. It's the overpay. It's the Detroit market. You could definitely do that. Like a guy like a DeMar DeRozan who might not be chasing a championship, you can pay those guys. Or utilize your cap space to trade for people as well. Like how they got Blake Griffin. Yeah. Did he want to come to Detroit? Not necessarily, but did he come Well, that here? was a trade, wasn't it? it? But that's what I'm saying. You yeah. can utilize your cap space yeah. to, to take on trade, especially during the draft. Yeah. The Pistons, they're going to have high draft capital this season, maybe next season. Well, I think they lose it next season. It conveys to the Knicks, but I think it's going to be a second-round pick by that time. But it, it's going to convey they can trade. They have some high assets. They got cap space. Teams like the Knicks, the Knicks wanted to sign Jalen Brunson, so they gave us seven players, including the draft rights to Jalen Durant. That's true, yeah. So that type of stuff can uh, can happen. Shout out, Rake, though. Yeah. You want to read? Oh. Well, boys, I start my new job Monday. It might be the last time I can watch live for a while. Ah. Rake, congrats, though. Hey, we would love to have you live every day. Out, but this is a celebration, baby. You're your family. Yeah. Shout out to Ray, you. Man. Congrats on the new I job. I feel that, man. I know we were chatting offline, and it's a good situation you got going in. Uh, That's what's up. A little more the right yeah. time free in your life. And we I see love him that, at man. the events. He shows up to the office sometimes with donuts and goodies. He shows up with Start. merch sometimes. He, he'll, he's at all of the events supporting and rocking the Wilbur Sports merch. Uh, he's just overall a good guy, man. Yeah. He, he and oh, his yeah. lady. Yep. Yep. Definitely, 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 man. Also, uh, congratulations. 365 days. Still hockey oh, season. <laughs> What, what was that? <laughs> what? Remember Happy Gilmore? <laughs> yeah, boy. Do it, do it again. <laughs> 365 days of hockey season. Oh! <laughs> you know it's Friday. Really, man. it should we, be a baseball. We, we got to get ready to get up out of here, man. But yeah. real quick, uh, I will be down at Friday Night Smackdown tonight at LCA. Hey. So cool. if y'all see me in the building, make sure you say what up. I'll be with the wifey, so keep it brief. But I'll be in the 200 section. Come holla at me, man. What's I up? will not, however. Sorry, I got to work. But I so I could. It's all good. And the remember, if KG is smiling at you, he doesn't like you. Pretty much. Duh. If he is not smiling, you're his boy. Yeah. yeah. Good call. Or somebody took food off his plate. That, too. that comment still sends me, dog. They were like, no. why, why it look it's like It's funny because I do make that face when I'm eating, too. I don't like my food being taken. Shout out the wife. She know I, she, she does it to me all the time. But, yeah. Oh, man. Yo, this was a great show. We'll definitely, uh, is it time to wrap it up? Yeah, let's do it. It is time to wrap it up. Got to do things the safe way, right? Yeah. But uh, shout out to <laughs> You do need a raincoat on today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? <laughs> that got to go, man. <laughs> this has been a wild Friday. Oh, As you <laughs> I didn't know we were going to get that. Butter, twerking down. Yeah, this shit off the rails. This shit off the rails, man. Dude, honestly, the caffeine jumped in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That moment when Shut the caffeine up, kicks in. All right. Yeah, bourbon ham is the best, man. Take us out, Kool-Aid. Let's, Let's do this. Man. Shout out to Flannel Sam, the fifth member of this squad. Our vet as well. I know he's going to be on Big D Energy today, so definitely tap into that. But shout out to Mr. KG, Detroit's number one draft pick. Great segment today. Great segment as always with Woodward. You rather today. Appreciate it, on man. fire, bro. And we got Woodward Sports' MVP in the TD booth, Mr. J.B. Smooth. Jay What's up, fellas? It's been an amazing show. A lot of laughs. UFC 300 this weekend. Check it out. Also, if you're not doing anything before UFC 300, come to the Rockers' final home game before they make that playoff stretch at Big Boy Arena on Saturday. <laughs> Eduardo O'Neill with a couple, uh, you know, we're going to read those. Hey, I love this show. And then another one. We never wrap it up. 
<laughs> gonna wrap that shit up, B. Right. They're double entendres flying right now. <laughs> flying, dog. Yeah. Wrap that gavel up. <laughs> right, wrap that gavel up. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Matthew Broder. One of our kind of Mr. Everything guys, man. Our credential hey. lions. Shout out Shane Halter. Rider. Hey, shout out Shane Halter. <laughs> <laughs> He's an old Tiger who played nine positions in one yeah. game. Yeah. Like that's, our, that's our Matthew Broder here, man. And you know what? Great segment as well, Going breaking around. down the pitching mechanics. And it's your boy, Brandon Day, aka Detroit Kool Aid. Detroit Pistons. Pistons. Yeah, Detroit Pistons, beat writer and reporter. You guys have a great day. Smash that like button on the way out. Thank you all for supporting the Woo Crew, as Mr. KG calls us. Yes, sir. You guys have a blessed day. It's been Wake Up Woo Woo.